Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, welcome. I don't know why I keep doing that. It's just funny. It's just funny. Hey everyone, it's Fox here. Now I'm just getting things set up because Windows decided to update and it all went a bit pants. So I hope you can hear and see everything. I'm just checking something now. Oh, it's all gone a bit wrong. Windows decided it would be a perfect time to do an update just as I was about to get going. <sighs> and then it all went to pot. So it should all be working. Should. Should. I think. One second. I'm just getting my chat sorted out. There we go. Right. So let me know if you can see and hear all the things because I can't tell. I need you to tell me if everything is hunky and dory. <sighs> hey, I'm back. And also pineapple. Yes, welcome. As always, we'll give it a few minutes for people to turn up. Uh, oh, Canada. Afternoon, Fox. Yep, Scott. Thanks, Scott. So you can see and hear things. Good. We'll just give it a few minutes for folks to turn up. <sighs> yes, so it, it decided to do an update. And that was brilliant because that's the last thing I needed. Was A, an update that could take a minute or an hour. And then an update that suddenly my computer, when it rebooted, is like, oh, by the way, I don't recognise that graphics tablet at all. Also, your camera, also your mouse and your keyboard and everything else plugged in. And do you need a monitor? And here's a lot of privacy things. And by the way, Cortana now works, so here's 500 options. I'm like, shut up. Just get running. Oh, so stressing. Looking good and sounding excellent, says Tony. Afternoon, folks, says Earl D. I'll give it a minute or two for folks to turn up, and then we'll go through and see who's in. So how is everybody today? Hopefully you're all getting some decent weather. It's sunny again today. It's been rainy for the last few days. The warmth has returned. Apparently, mum tells me we're in for four months of heat wave. I will believe that when I see it. To be honest, I don't believe that for a minute. This is this is England. We don't do heat wave. We do a bit warm that we then panic about. So yeah, I don't believe all that. Right, let me just make sure everything is working properly. I know Memento Bitter. Okay. Do, do, do. Right. Was that was that O Canada a bit loud? I had to adjust the volume because it was really quiet last time. <laughs> Let me know. I will adjust it. Which means I won't. I'll just hope it's the right volume and it'll either deafen you or be inaudible. Uh, I'm just double checking some things. And one second. Right, let's have a look. I think we're good to go. So, welcome, 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 one and all, to Warhammer Sundays. If you've not watched one of these before, uh, this is my me time that I decided I would stream anyway. As you know, during the week, Monday to Friday, what I plan to do now is my other builds, my Gumpler, my Stuff Free models, my whatever takes my fancy. And then at weekends, I will dive in resist the urge to play Elite Dangerous for two solid days uh, and do my Warhammer army. I am building a Warhammer army. It's an Imperial army with the Tempesta Scions and the Grunt Troops and the Imperial Knights and the vehicles and things like that. Maybe some space puppies? I don't know. But I'm going to be building the Unending Forces of the Holy Contrivance, which is the name of my army. And I ran a competition to come up with the look for the army and it's going to be themed on the Principality of Zeon from Mobile Suit Gundam. So when they paint all these up, they'll all have different colour schemes, which tip of a hat to the Principality of Zeon. I've got a whole load of Zeon stickers, to, uh, stickers, uh, gumpler, water slides to put on them. So yes, so in the last few episodes, I've got all my Tempesta Scion dudes and my Grunt dudes and a load of Space Marines that Vincent sent me and other bits and bobs built, not painted, just built. I've got one uh, Lehman Russ built, almost. Uh, and I've just decided to start building one of my Imperial Knights. I'm going to have three Imperial Knights. And in keeping with the Zeon theme, we're going to have one Zaku, one Goof, and one Char's custom Zaku. And at the moment, we're building the bog standard Zaku, which is based on the Knight Errant. So, this is what we're going to do. So, this is just really... Uh, so, on Sundays, what I'm doing is I'm just streaming me working on these. It's really just a chance for you guys to hang out in the chat and have a good laugh. If you're watching this... Uh, and you can't see the chat anywhere. So if you're watching on my Patreon page or on the Facebook page or somewhere else or in the Discord or something, stop watching it there. Keep watching it, but click on the little YouTube button at the bottom right of the player and that will take you to the YouTube page where you can see the live chat. Join in the chat. It's good fun. We all have a good laugh. I will be doing giveaways a bit later on for stickers and things in the live chat. So you want to be in it to win it. You certainly do. Uh, if you... 
are on some tablets that don't have the chat, so you might have to switch between the app and the actual website if you're on a tablet or something, because sometimes they don't have the chat. Uh, as always, a couple of quick shout outs before we get going. Don't forget to pop along if you're not a member already to the Model Makers Boom Hut, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Model Boom Hut. Uh, it's the best place in the universe to hang out and talk about your model making. Everybody's dead friendly, everybody's dead nice, and you'll have a good time. And don't forget, of course, as always, uh, this channel is supported by my beautiful, beautiful patrons at my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash model making guru. If you would like to help support this channel, keep this channel going, keep getting content, keep you know, making content, then do pop along and have a look and see there are various rewards uh, for your pledges. So go and have a look. But anyway, let's crack on. What are we doing today? Well, uh, last week we built a bit of the tour, so I didn't get very far. I don't get very far in. I don't do a lot of work in these streams. I keep thinking I'll spend Saturday doing work and then Sunday we'll just have a couple of hours catch up. But what I tend to do is not do any work on the Saturday, so I need to get out of that habit and then just do work during the live stream. So I haven't got any further from last week. So we've got the basic structure, the basic chassis for the torso done. And I had some bits that I glued together last week that I need to get rid of the mould lines on. So, where are we up to? So, I'll have a quick look at the chat and see how we're doing. Now, if you've never seen one of these before, basically what I do is spend two hours looking at the chat and talking to you guys and not actually doing any work. So, there you go. Uh, now, again, yes, this week, don't forget, of course, we will be doing sticker giveaways. I've given away pretty much all my Skipper Ted stickers. So, what we have this week, if I move that out of the way, somewhere, what we have this week are some Model Making Guru stickers and some Team Inept stickers. Team Inept's the channel that me, Paul and Chris have set up for video gaming. And don't forget, of course, from last week, I did get myself another Warhammer 40k lined journal, which is basically a really beautiful lined book with lines and lots of inspiring quotes on page, pages like Chaos Consumes All, uh, Life's Purpose is to Serve the Emperor. So yeah, so you can win one of these. I'll be pulling the winner today. I think I've fiddled it so I can actually show you pulling the winner just because I might have figured it out. It's making my computer scream because I've got more than one window open. So we'll do that a bit later. So we'll pull the winner later on today. So stay tuned for those. Let's see who we've got in the chat. Oops, we've got a wobbly iPad. That's what we've got. So we have Gwenel Dupre. I'm ready. My body is ready. Hey, Gwenel. Uh, we have Nims in, Nims Cinder in. Stickers came in yesterday, Fox. I just don't have any place cool to put them at the moment. You'll find somewhere. Stick them on your face. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Give me them. I'll add them on the nubby corn, says Grinnell. For those that don't know, uh, Grinnell's making a, a perfect grade unicorn. And since she's been making it, everybody who's had any interaction with Grinnell at all has discovered problems with their own builds. It's the curse of the nubby corn. So whenever anybody works on a, a unicorn, models that they know will also have problems. It just causes problems. Tony Blackwell. Hi, Tony. Hi, everyone. I knew there was something I was forgetting. Ghost Lyle. Hey, I'm back. And also Pineapple. Yes. Scott Sutherland says, oh, Canada. Everything good on my end, says Nim. Uh, the Earl D is in. We mentioned him earlier. Rat Pack 30 is in. God, you scared me. I was deeply involved with my X-Wing and suddenly loud music came from my speakers as I thought my PC were in sleep mode. <laughs> Sorry about that, dude. Nate Bliss is in. Hey, Nate. Uh, what's we've got? A Random Moose says, hey, hey, A Random Moose. That's an A Random awesome name. Welcome. Uh, Smoo's in. Hey, mate. Smoo, how you doing? Look, look, Smoo. Look, Smoo. I've got the wee skitters. I've got a bit of skitters for my enormous coffee of happiness, which is always required. Uh, Frankie goes to Hollywood. Hi, Fox and everyone watching a bit of your live stream while working on my Revell VW Golf 1 GTI. I had to work on a Golf 1 GTI in real life. It wasn't fun. You know, stripping all the paint off, repainting it wasn't fun. I can imagine the model would be a lot more fun. Gerwin Morse. Hi, Fox. Hi, Gerwin. Uh, Ilti Andover says, Hi all, what's the plan for today? The plan for today is try and do some goddamn work. It's not going to happen. The plan for today is just sit and shoot the breeze with you guys, basically. The plan for today is also to get some tissue. Ugh. I've got this kitchen roll that's rubbish. It just rips all the... Look, that's just rubbish. This is for the enormous moustache of soaking up. Because every time I take a big swig of the big coffee... Big coffee... My moustache absorbs about a litre of coffee. So I have that. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Frankie goes to Hollywood. Yeah, Fox, I love my GTI model kit. Yeah, just don't ever do it on the real life thing because it, it's a right ball ache. Um, I don't think... Well, while I was working there, we never... We were supposed to strip it down, repaint it completely, and the guy was going to mod it all up. 
it never happened. And while I was still working there, we hadn't finished it. And I don't know if they've now finished it since. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if the guy just gave up and said, look, just go and go and get somebody else to do it. It was a, a millstone around my neck, on my neck anyway. Um, for anybody who asks, we are making a Warhammer kit. Yes, we are making at Imperial Knight, which will not look anything like that when it's finished. Well, it will. It just won't be that colour. We are making sort of the Knight Errant. Like I said, we're going to be doing Zaku's. So what I'm going to do is for each of these three knights, they're all going to have the big slappy fist, that thing. Big slappy fist there, which is actually called, is actually called uh, Thunderstrike Gauntlet. And then they'll have different weapons. So I think the Knight Errant might have the, uh, the flame, heavy flamer or the flame gun, whatever it's called. And then I'm not sure, the Crusader, depends on value and damage and points, the Crusader might be Charles Zaku and the Warden might be uh, the Goof, but I've not decided yet. So I need to put my destructions up here, get me glues. So where are we up to? So last week uh, I was working on the torso and I put together to exhausts, oops, to exhausts, yay, and to bolt, uh, to stubber that goes on the shoulder or under the face, put the face together, I built the shield that goes on the side and I built that as well, so I didn't actually I could do a lot of work last week, I need my space helmet of seeing, so I can do the seeing, and let's crack on shall we? Uh, you do know Fox there are mugs with stash guards thanks to the Victorians, yeah but that just gets in the way of swigging. Sometimes I like to take great big deep swigs in and it doesn't work with that. The Ravel Golf was one of the first car kits I built. Really nice kit. Gauntlet of the Thunder Striking, says Tony Blackwell. Right, so we'll start off. Uh, we squished these together last week with the glue. Uh, we filled in a bit of the seams. Did a bit of sanding on them, but not much. So I need to get rid of some of these. Oh, did I do it? I don't even remember now. It's been a week. Uh, I may have cleaned this. I can't remember. I'm just blanking it completely. Yeah, we've got some work we need to do on there where it was squished together. So I squished so all the glue came out. My Tamir extra thin. Uh, a little bit of sanding to do on there just to clean it up a little bit. Clean it up just a little bit. Oh, I've got a handy tip for you guys, by the way. If you should be making the uh, Tacom AML90 like I'm doing for my Imperial, oh it's very dark the picture, I'll just change that in a minute. If you should be making the Tacom AML90 uh, light reconnaissance vehicle, don't spray matte varnish on the tyres, it stays sticky and it stays shiny, I don't know why. I put matte varnish on those and it just didn't, it didn't, it reacted with the rubber and stayed sticky. Bit of a pain, bit of a pain, but I'll be weathering over them. Right, let me just adjust this colour on the picture because it's, it's a bit dark and grimy. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute, I can do this now you see. Uh, right, let me adjust that. So we're going to go there, and we're going to do configure video, and we're going to do some slidey sliders. Uh, let's have a look. Let's change the gain. Do 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 do. That's too bright. Let's change the brightness. Let's bring that back in so I can see. Uh, is that a bit better? That's a bit better, isn't it? Yes. A little bit brighter. Cool. Maybe not quite as bright, but I'll change the colour intensity. That seems about right, maybe. I'm just farting about now, let's just put that down. And let's just stop farting about. Right. Anyway. Yes, what I'm hoping today is that when we do the giveaway later, I can do a bit of this. Watch this. Watch this now, ready? Look at that. I can do switching. Yeah, how cool is that? How can I turn it off? Wait, hang on. There you go. So it requires some fartassery on my part, but I can do switching now. So Please do tell me you can still see my hands and I still hear me. I've probably broken it. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Smoo says, and today Fox will stick bits of styry into his face live for your amusement. I'll probably scoop them up in my enormous beard and then not even realise it. It's probably. So... So how is everyone? How has your week been? Uh, uh, my week's been good. Finally the building work next door stopped, so I've been able to crack on with the diorama, which I could show you, but it's got a pile of stuff on top of it at the minute, uh, for the e-models build. That's come along slowly. 
it also stopped being hot and sticky as well. I need my thingy tools. Also, it stopped being hot and sticky, so I could actually work without shedding pounds in weight, which was nice. Uh, the knife for this one. A little bit of a seam line here, but I can't quite get it with the edge tool. Work in the middle of the screen, dear. So I hope you're all doing well. What's on your bench at the moment? Tell me what you're working on and where you're up to and how it's going. Hopefully whatever you're working on is awesome and it's going really well. Just give me these little seam seam lines. Uh, what news do I have? Not a lot really. Not a lot of news to be going on with. Uh, Mum went to see the doctor, went to the uh, for MOT uh, later, earlier this week. Passed with flying colours, so all is good. Uh, what else has been going on? Uh, I got my shipment of fudges and beers from Mike Mountain, because he went to visit Scott in Orkney, thank you very much. Or was that last week? I can't remember now. I've drunk one of the beers, not drunk them both. Mum has eaten a significant amount of the fudge. And I have to tell you, I have to tell you, out of all those fudges, Scott and Mike, out of all those fudges, the two, by far the two nicest ones were the chilli fudge and the chocolate fudge. The chocolate fudge just tasted fantastic. Didn't necessarily taste like chocolate, but it tasted awesome. And the chilli fudge didn't take like, taste like chilli at all. It did taste pretty much exactly like burnt sugar fudge, which, if you don't know what that is, it's just fudge with burnt sugar on it and it's the most amazing thing ever used to have a deli near me that did it used to buy tons of the stuff so yeah the fudges there's still a little bit of fudge left but not much not much fudge doesn't last long around me so i'm just going around getting rid of some of these nubs uh when i put these two these together these these are all like two halves glued together when i put them together one handy tip is don't take off the nubs before you glue them together because if you've got two edges with a nub on either edge and you trim the nubs, you might end up with a gap like that where one is a bit not straight. So stick them together first. Get your glue coming out the seam for your filling. Then go and sort your nubs out. Okay, so that's that done. A little bit there. Let's get this off. Scraping, scraping. Thankfully, this week there are no barky barky dogs outside. There are shouty shouty children playing in next door's garden but I don't mind that that's fine that's kids playing that's absolutely perfectly fine it's not a problem at all and you can tell it's kind of spring or slightly summer because when you go outside all you can smell is like paddling pool kind of smells this is great well takes me back to my youth uh, where's the other exhaust I've lost one somewhere uh, there it is there okay so we've got some nubbage here so you can see here I don't know if it'll come out on camera uh, but you can see, wow, that colour is really, let me, I'm going to adjust the colour again because it's really gone wrong. <sighs> live telly, folks, this is what happens on live telly. This is what live telly is all about, is me pressing buttons badly. That's a bit better. I'm not quite that sun-drenched. There we go. Pressing buttons. Uh, I'll just move that over here. Basically, you've tuned in to listen to me fiddling with my PC. <sighs> so, I don't know if it'll see on camera. There's a little nub there. I'll see if I can zoom in. So, I zoom in. Let me zoom in. Uh, no, I can't zoom in. Oh, well, well there's a little nub there anyway, that I left. But there's also the seam that's filled by the glue. So, I can deal with that all at the same time now. And it just means that when I get rid of the nub on one side, I can get rid of the nub on the other side at the same time. And I'll hopefully have a nice level surface I won't have like a dip on one side because I gouged it out and the other side I didn't so a little bit of filey filey action going on do, 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 do. yeah so I didn't do any on work on this yesterday I never got around to it uh, I actually played a bit of Elite Dangerous yesterday I decided to grind my f my Federation rep so I went to Sothis and did some Sothis to Seos runs of missions made myself a cool 16 mil after a, over a couple of hours I think my federation rank now is petty officer so I've got access to earth which is cool and I've got used to my Asp Explorer 
Uh, when I first got the Asp, I suddenly forgot, because it handles differently, it's like I forgot how to fly and land and dock. So I was a complete spoon. Like I couldn't land for toffee. I've got used to it now. I love my Asp Explorer now. And I didn't like the colour scheme it came with. It was like a dark grey, gunmetal grey, German grey colour. It was really boring. But I didn't want to spend any money on the in, in you know on the in, in game store to get a new colour scheme. Because I did that with my with my Cobra. And I was like, yeah, this stupidly priced all the bits and bobs is ridiculous. Like that's seven quid for a paint job. Pfft, I don't think so. But I had a look anyway, and I just happened to have 300 credits left in the in-game store from the last time I used it. And uh, luckily, the paint job I wanted was happened to be 300 credits, so I got myself a nice spanky paint job. What I call a Millennium Falcon paint job. It's like whites and greys and a red stripe. That looks cool. So I played that a bit. I do love me some Elite Dangerous. Frame shift drive charging. Four, three, two, one, engage. Pew. I love it. I've got Victor as my Kovas voice. Victor's a great voice. I don't like Verity, she's boring. Although I, I'm one of those people that, are, like a lot of other people, I can't help thinking he says friendship drive. And that just sounds awesome. Friendship drive charging. Landing gear attractive. <laughs> You mishear what he says. I have attractive landing gear, apparently. Right, so that's that. Any more nubbage? Nub, 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 nubbage. Cutting all the crap away. A little nub here, but it's on the wrong way around, so I can't quite get to it. Yeah, so you probably won't learn many hints and tips during these live streams while I'm building things, because it's not really the focus of these. If you've not watched one of these before, it's really just, I was going to be sat here doing this anyway. So I figured I may as well do a bit of live streaming. And hang out with you guys while I'm doing the live streaming. There we go. Because it's more, it's more a chance for you guys to hang out in the chat and be silly, basically. Uh, as always, this isn't, an, this isn't my E-Models Monday night stream. So I don't mind if you swear in the chat. You're more than welcome to swear if you want. You don't have to. There may be some younger viewers watching, but hey, I don't really care. I know I don't swear on my actual videos, but that's because that's because monetization is involved. I don't swear much, but I don't mind if you swear in chat. I may I may not read those words out, but I'll know they're there. Don't worry. Doesn't have to be. Well, I was going to say it doesn't have to be family friendly. It kind of does, but it doesn't. If you want to say a rude word, say a rude word. Do, 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 do. Let's sand these things away. Do recommend if you're sanding things and you're getting rid of bits of dust, get yourself a floppy brush like that, a fan brush. They're great for de-dusting. Also, for great for dusting models that have been on your shelf for ages and a bit dusty because you don't snap off all the bits. See what the chat is doing. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's have a look. Where are we up to? Uh, good week. I bought a new car, says Tony. Tony, what did you get? 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 What did you, you get? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me. Oh, I burped. Oh, oh, spring rolls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had a lot of spring rolls left over from last night. I've just eaten them all. There's about 20 of them. <gasps> when you burp, it's the nicest flavour. Uh, At least no cutting of himself, says Eelter. Yeah, there will be. Well, there hasn't been yet. Doesn't mean there won't be. Right now I'm making a custom build of... It's a hybrid RG Unicorn and an HG Strike Gundam. I like the sound of that. Warhammer 40k Cultist, that is what I'm doing. Cool. Yes. Smooth Workshop. Contemplating actually doing some more decals on my RZ250 and finally getting it finished so I can do my Porsche 911 that I'm going to attempt to light up. I'd say probably the best thing there, Smooth, because if you like... I know what you like. If you start doing the Porsche, you'll just have another kit on the go and you'll have 18 things on the go. And eventually, if you're like me, you'll just go, I can't do anything because I'm overloaded. So I try and force myself to get something done before I do the next thing. Otherwise, I'll never get stuff finished. Uh, there you go, the sniffles, because the camera's on my nose sniffles. It seems to be the way. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Working on a Revell Audi R8, says Tony Blackwell. I screwed up the paintwork and I'm trying to save it. Dettol, strip it back. There you go. 
Uh, Rat Pack 30 is working on a Bandai 172nd Poo's X-Wing. Star Wars for a change. Also my first Star Wars kits. I kind of like the, the new X-Wings. I, I kind of prefer the originals though, but I still like the new ones. Enormous coffee. Na, 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 na. Oh, so much catch, catches in my moustache. It really does. It's like if I had a pint of coffee, I'd have a half a pint now and half a pint later. Store it in my moustache. Right now I'm using Pla Plate for the legs, says a random moose. I've gunk washed my friend's X-Wing. <laughs> it must be good friends. Uh, I've gunk washed my friend's X-Wing, says Nim. Now it's drying and I'm working still on my MG and my Master Grade Dual Gundam. I'm on the Assault Shroud. Cool. Reese is in. Hey Reese, RJC Models Official. Hey Fox, hope you're well. My colleagues had to blue light me into the hospitals now out watching you to cheer me up. <gasps> Why? What have you done? What, what happened, Reese? Tell me, tell me. If, if you want to. I tell me privately if you don't want to tell it in the chat. I hope you're okay. I hope you are okay, dude. Uh, well, I mean, you're watching this, so uh, you're clearly not not uh, in a very bad way. But I hope you're all right. Do let me know. The Ginger Orkney fudge was surprisingly awesome. Yeah, some of the fudge that Mike and Smoo, uh, Mike and Smoo, Mike and uh, Scott sent me was ginger fudge. I'm not the biggest fan of ginger. I like ginger that you get in sushi where it's thin strips. I don't like ginger that's just ginger, like you put on stuff. But it was quite nice. It was kind of refreshing. Nate Bliss says, given Sunday is build day, I finished the build stage of my machine in Krieger Fireball. So I'm just starting my Ghibli Nausicaa riding on Kai kit from Bandai. Awesome. Tony Black, well, I've been tempted by that kit, Nate Bliss. I built the Flapter from Laputa by Bandai. It's a really nice kit. I love those kind. They're kind of very steampunk, aren't they? Oh, my Jerry says on his bench, currently there's a mega-sized Gundam, an Imperial Star Destroyer, and a Mills Grenade. It's not something you actually often hear people say, yes, I'm making a Mills Grenade. I didn't know you could get kits of such things. I assume you mean a model, not an actual Mills Grenade. Do we need to alert somebody here? Uh, bit of a doo chat jumped hang on i've got to find it again where did it go no uh ilta says grenade i don't remove the pin uh, yeah i want to get those kits says nate and while i'm not a big fan of bandai in general i can't help being in awe of their molding detail yeah jerry says lol it's a resin kit mr loth vincent saying that afternoon fox and hello everyone hey vincent a random moose retracted a message i don't know why you're allowed to swear uh, no no religion or politics but you're allowed to swear uh, hey Fox, just with E on my way home, we'll tune in a bit, says Mike Mountain. Hey Mike. Hello. We shall I'm sure we'll be here in a while, don't worry, you know it. Really want the swordfish from Bebop, says Jerry. It's apparently quite a nice kit that. Uh I watched somebody make it. Was it Dr. Faust Painting Clinic? Can't remember. Gary Moore says bottom. I I don't want to know, thank you very much. Unless that's your swear word, in which case brilliant. Spid is in, Spidy Quake. Hey, Spid. He says, hi, dudes. Uh, let's have a look. Hey, when did you succumb to the power of the God Hand Fox? When we last had a chat about them around Christmas, you went to introduce the cost of them. It was a gift. Stein Van Gemmert sent me my emergency package that he sent me all the cool stuff. He also sent me a pair of God Hands. Do you not watch my videos? Honestly, I'm so offended. <laughs> yeah, he sent me a pair of God Hands. So I'm like, oh. So thank you to Stein. Uh, he got sent the God Hands as a present. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yes, because I was, because they are like 30, there was something like 35 quid, which is fine. I don't mind paying for good quality products, but it was also about 45 quid to ship them to me. I'm like, well, I'm not paying more for shipping than the actual product. Yeah, Scott is building another diggy thingy. Does it have a vibratory action, Scott? It's been a week and I still haven't bought a kit to build, says Chris the Pyro. What is the blockage here? What is the blockage? Are you just replete with too many choices or are you just kind of going, ah, and you can't? Nothing's making your, nothing's floating your boat. They are not though. When doing Gumpler, they cut the time spent denubbing down severely. They do. I've not tried them on Gumpler yet. I'll get. I'll give these their first Gumpler run on the Strike Rouge in the next few weeks. They're fine for uh, Warhammer. They struggle a little bit because Warhammer nubs are really thick, and some of them are quite high up. So they're not quite long enough, really, for for all of the Warhammer stuff. They're not designed for that, so I'm not going to hold that against them. But I can't wait to get them on my Strike Rouge. Pose X-Wing. I never knew the Teletubbies flew X-Wings, says Spid. As the sun is out, I might jump on my bike for a blast to McDee's for a horse burger. Do it. Get uh, Do what I do. Get a, a big tasty with bacon, uh, a Big Mac, and large fries. There you go. That's my normal McDonald's menu. 
John Bennett's in. Hi, John. Uh, hi, Dad, says Scott to Mike. Ben and Jerry's did a limited edition ginger ice cream. It was wonderful, says Tony Blackwell. Dave's in. Dave Weiser and Gumbarker at work on a smoke break. Yeah, well, thank you for coming in. You'll miss all the interesting stuff, but I'll make sure all the interesting stuff is out, you know, on either side of your smoke breaks. So when you come in for the smoke break, we'll just be talking about cheese or something. Uh, effing right wing Christian conservative politicians. Am I right? Sorry, Fox. What aren't we allowed to talk about again? Says Spidey Quate. <laughs> Help, help, I'm being repressed, says Dave. You're being misspelled. Uh, you're being repressed. Now, you've got to go back to work, Dave. They pay your bills. Random Moose says, Season 1, see, the uh, reason I removed the message is because it was going to be a hybrid of the HE Unicorn and HE Charzaku, but I don't really know. Oh, okay. Reese has a bad virus and he passed it out. And he passed out. He'll inbox me, so I'm not clogging chat. Okay, well, I hope you get better, dude. Do take care of yourself. Lots of fluids. Bed rest. Watch nonsense. There you go. I can probably, I can probably bore your virus into submission. Oh, so much coffee in my moustache. Uh, Bro, build a good day, folks. I'm working on extremely customising some gumpla today. Cool. Customise extreme. Hello, uh, Jordan Nash. One of these days, I'll actually get the stuff from Japan mailed off to you. Says Jordan. Cool. I mean, forgot. Says a random moose. Uh, Spiddy made an egg model of Smoo. Ha ha ha! It's fair. It's funny. Says Smoo. Spiddy made an egg model of Smoo. It's funny. Says Smoo. Okay, I guess little egg model of Smoo's little character. Right. Anyway, enough chat. Because I've got the end of the chat. Let's do some more work. Uh, so yeah, not really much to talk about this week. Nothing really happened in this last week. I say pop one in for MOT. That plastic with flying colours. I'm still shouting at Plusnet, my broadband provider, at the moment. It's just like... Oh. I mean, they seem to not understand what I'm saying, basically. I've never had a problem with Plusnet. I've always found them to be really, really good broadband supplier. They're not sponsoring me. I'm not doing advertising. I've never had a problem with them. But, like a couple of months ago, I suddenly realised I'm supposed to get like up to 75 meg or up to 80 meg. And I was getting like 30 meg on the nose all the time. And I'm like... Why am I getting 30 meg? So I mailed them. And they said, oh yeah, we've uh, we've changed the package. We've split off our broadband, which was up to 85 meg, into two. The cheaper one goes up to 30 meg, and the more expensive one goes up to 85 meg. I'm like, and you dropped me down to the lower tier. Thanks for that, without my permission or consent. Thanks. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much. So they said, oh, so they sent an engineer, and they sent engineers to the line, and they sent engineers to the house. And it's gone on and on and on. And he's mailed me today and said, right, well, the engineer's been to your house now into the network and everything else. We can't find a fault. You're getting what your line can do. And I'm like, well, hang on a minute. When I first took your fibre package many, many years ago, it was up. It was like guaranteed up to 75 or 80 meg. That's what the package was. And I was getting between 60 and 70 meg. Uh, and it varied, but I typically got between 60 and 70 meg. Now I'm getting... Well, I was getting about 35 until the BT guy did some work on the wiring in my house, to be fair. And he got me up to 45. So now I'm getting 45. So you can't tell me that my line can only cope with up to 45 meg when I used to get 70 to 80 meg. So it tells me a couple of things. One, either BT have, for some reason, which I failed to, to imagine what it would be, Decided to change equipment on the network somewhere between the exchange of my house, which now means I only get 45 meg. I find that highly unlikely. Two, you've gone into the portal at your end because I used to do your, I used to do their job. You've gone into the portal and made changes to my profile, which for some reason caps me at. Well, the engineer said 55 meg, caps me at 55 meg. And three, the package you put me on to get around this problem in the first place states. 50 to 80 meg guaranteed I'm not even getting that so I've had to shoot one back saying basically that and it's like I can't make it more simple you've done something and suddenly I'm getting half the speed I used to get so to sit right, sit there and say it's all your line can handle is clearly bullshit because my line used to handle twice as much I'm just having trouble with them actually understanding that which is quite frustrating I mean I'm not complaining you know 45 meg well I'm complaining but 45 meg it's still fine I can still do my YouTubes and uploading and stuff I'm not you know, it's not like I've got no broadband, but I used to get twice that. 
So that's what's happening at the moment in my life, basically. It's just frustration with broadband providers. And it's really weird because they've always been really, really awesome and never had a problem with them ever. And where they have had the occasional, you know, blip of service or something, it's just because they've done some work on the exchange and tweaked my profile as part of a mass tweak and forgotten to put it back up. So I've been on low speeds every now and then. That's fine. I just phone up and say, hey, can you put my profile back to unlimited, please? Because you put me up to five meg. Uh, and the, then it, I don't know, it's just very frustrating. Very frustrating. Uh, the difficulty for me is that I used to do their job. I used to do customer services and I used to do things like broadband and mobile support. So I kind of, I go in. The one thing I've learned is if you want to get something out of customer services, don't go in shouting because they'll just go, yeah, screw you. So I've been nice and polite, but I have my limits. Uh, it's actually a character called Totoro from Anime Smoo, but it does bear a resemblance. I should have put a comment in between Totoro and Smoo. Lol. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, Totoro. And, yeah, I get it. But I have a few eggs in the fridge, maybe a Smoo and a crew. Hmm. I don't know what kind of produce I would be. I'm not really in the crew, but... Uh, da -da. That would be funny, Spid. At least you wouldn't have to put a lot of hair on them, says Smoo. Tony Blackwell says, My workbench this morning, I split my fingernail. I... I repaired it with CA glue and talc, followed a sandpaper and sprue goo. <laughs> well, that's that's what Tony always tells you when he does his videos. Super glue was originally designed as something to quickly seal a wound. So if you do stab yourself, eh, like you know, like I do all the time, don't just sit there and bleed everywhere and go and get a plaster and put it on and go. It won't. It won't stop bleeding. It won't stop bleeding. Like if you drop your knife into your leg, like I did, get yourself some super glue, and squeeze it in. It's a quick way to stop a wound bleeding, and hopefully, as the as because the, the glue will break down, you can get rid of it with soap and water, and it will just break apart anyway. But hopefully, by the time it does that, your your platelets have done their job and clogged up the vein, and the bleeding will stop, and you'll be happy. Of course, don't just don't you know don't glue your fingers to each other. It was designed to stick skin to skin. That's why it does what it does. So yeah, sticking CA glue in a wound like. The thing is, I take I give you that advice now, but every time I stab myself, I completely forget that, and then I run around going Aah! with blood pouring everywhere, and I'm like, I always have, I always manage to stab myself on the bit of the finger that normal plasters won't really stick to. So, yeah, yeah I don't I split a finger. I don't even want to know how you split a finger now. Uh, yes, they do that every time I've been on holiday a week. They drop my speed until I complained on returning, when it would magically go back up. Yeah. Wow, you had a job, said Ghost Liar. I did once. I spent 25 years doing crappy customer service jobs, generally for telecoms companies, apart from a few years where I worked for a sort of estate agency, sort of, and property market company. Uh, and I did a few years for a sheltered housing company that monitored the... If you ever go in the UK, if you ever go to like an old folks home or sheltered housing, they have the pull cords and you pull it. Say the person, the elderly resident has a fall. And they fall over and they pull the cord or press the button and they can speak to someone who can call an ambulance or call them the, the warden of the of the home to come and get them help them out i used to do that and that's actually the best one of the best jobs ever because you were looking after people you were helping them out but you have shit i've done crappy customer service jobs for 25 30 years uh, it's one of the one of the things that got me doing this was i thought i've had enough i've had enough of doing this now and then i did the detailing for a while as well uh, had a similar issue with my digital TV, Fox says Vincent. We had an old package that contained all the channels in France, Germany, the Discovery Run channels. They didn't know what was in it, so they removed it. Now I'm stuck with a whole bunch of separate packages that would cost me a lot more to get the same amount of channels. Yeah. Not for when one of the people in the house studies French and Italian, who's now lost the ability to watch most of Italian and French. It was just more the case that I was on the, you know, the full speed up to 80 meg package because that's all they had. And then they said, right, we're going to split it, but we're going to put you in the lower half. Because what you're paying now is about what the, the cheaper package cost. I'm thinking, so instead of just saying, hey, can we put your price up because we've split the package, they just said, we'll drop your speed down because that's what you're paying and we won't actually bother telling you. And I'm like, oh, so annoying. But like I say, I've never really had a problem with them. A lot of the people that I've spoken to, they are really nice. You get the occasional person there who doesn't know what to do. But like I said, because I've done that job for so long, I know how it works, I know what that job is like, so... Old folks up here are left to fend for themselves, says Ghost Lyle. This is more sheltered housing. It's where a company will have like a, a set of apartments. I don't know if where you are they have it, but a lot of places where you'll have like uh, a large complex of apartments that say elderly residents will rent. Uh, and it comes with, a, they're managed, so it has a warden on site. Uh, and it comes with, you know, like the pull cord system. 
a lot of them don't, but some of them do, especially sheltered housing. It's not just for elderly residents. Some of them have younger residents who perhaps are disabled uh, and things like that. So it's a good idea. It's not exactly cheap for the elderly resident, but there you go. Uh, instructions were unclear, Mr. Fox. I've now half poured half a litre of Mr. Leveling Thinner into an open wound and I'm quite a lot of pain. I'm in quite a lot of pain here. My leg is broken. Uh, yes, they don't inform you. At the very least, you should receive a mail stating that the changes and you'll be on the lower end if you do not contact them. Jacob Ray says, Hi, Mr. Fox. Did you drink again any coffee? Ready? <sighs> ah. Jacob likes it when I drink coffee. I don't know why. He likes it when I noisily drink my coffee. Uh, might not drink lots of water, mate. That stuff tends to accumulate in the liver and kidneys, says Mr. Lewis Model Making. Yes, don't put levelling thinner in. I know he didn't really. But just in case anybody watching, don't put levelling thinner on a wound. We don't recommend you do that. Don't try this at home. <laughs> Broken leg, but it's nice and level, says Tony Blackwell. Yes. Right, so I've done these bits. Oh, sniffly nose. I do apologise. It's always the way, I think it's the heat. When the lights are on and the camera's on, my nose goes all sniffly. I don't know why. If the camera's turned off now, it will stop sniffling. But there you go. So anyway, made the heat. Hey, right, there's a great big heat. Hello, hello. Welcome to my thing. I've got a thing sticking out the top of my head. It's a bit rubbish. That moves. Got some exhausts, a stubber, and a shield. What's next? What is next? Well, it says I shall glue fed in. However, I'm not an idiot. Because if I glue the head in, or rather glue in the thing that holds in the head, thusly, it goes there, and then the thing goes over the front. If I do that now, I can't get the brush around the back there. And when uh, when Duncan shows you on his video how to paint Imperial Knights, he has the head on there, and he's painting around it. He never actually shows you how he gets around the back, or he never actually gives you a look around the back afterwards. I know it turns a bit, but yeah, I'll leave the head off for now. Uh, we have to attach some armour, but I'm not going to be attaching the armour because I need to paint that separately. We've done the shield, we've done the heavy stubber. Uh, we need to glue some bits on to Electric Avenue and then we'll take it high. No, sorry. Uh, we need to glue some bits onto the carapace. Carapace. Sounds like a, like a 1970s chocolate bar. New carapace from Cadbury's. Caramel and mint in the same snack. Right, so I think I've done the nubs on here already. Yelp. Yelp. So I need to get lots of little handrails. And there's millions of them. So it's all those. Okay. Okay, let's find some sprues. Sprue time! Pulling wires, things banging, knocking. So I need, these shouldn't be hard to see, it'll be a sprue with lots of little handrails on it, which is not that one. It is, it's actually quicker with Games Workshop sprues to look for the part than actually look for the numbers, because it's so hard to see the numbers anyway, you may as well just not bother. That's mostly gun stuff. 124. There we go, there's lots of little handrails on that one. I think that's the sprue we need. You watch, there'll be sprues on other ones. Handrails on the other sprues as well now. Uh, I think that's the one, what we want. It is the one that I want. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh. Unzo, now we need the pieces. Which pieces do we need? Put those over there. Oh, hang on, I can glue my eggs horsts on, can't I? I can go back a step. I can attach me 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 gas me poop tubes on the back. De, 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 de. Where is the back? The back is here, and they need to go into these little holes here, like that. You see, which way do they go? That way. So they stick out thusly. Thusly, I like that big fat exhaust. Hell of a cherry bomb. 
get that round the estate at three in the morning, see what the neighbours think. <laughs> Gluing it on. As always, I'm using Tamir Extra Thin so I can put a little bit of glue in there and then run glue around the gap. And it will scoot into the gap. Melt the plastic and weld it together. Bob's your uncle's fan is your aunt. No mess, no fuss. That doesn't rhyme. No muss, no fuss. Now when you're gluing stuff with things like Tamir Extra Thin, you can worry at first because you'll see all shiny bits where the glue is. Because I've said before, when you, if you make a pool of this stuff or a blob of it, the solvent actually just evaporates away and flashes off. And it's not like tube glue, it doesn't leave a massive mess. Um, but you will still see areas where the plastic is, say, a little bit fainter or shinier, or it looks like there's some kind of roughness to it. Uh, but don't panic. If it's just shiny, or a slightly different faded colour perhaps, that'll disappear once you prime over it. Uh, if you do get any sort of bits where, say, you've got some glue on there and it's got a fingerprint in it because you've gone uh, with your thumb, or finger, being a fingerprint, um, then you could just very gently sand that and it'll go away. So there you go, don't panic too much. Just a very messless glue. I do quite like to be extra thin. Something every modeler should have in their ar in their arsenal. I said arsenal, and some thick as well. Uh, what are we doing? Hey Fox, please can you sing pineapple, pineapple, pineapples, but keep getting higher? I don't. Pineapple, 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 pineapple. I can't even say pineapple that fast that often. Pineapple, 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 That's as high as I can go without surgery or something very tight, gripping something very soft. Pineapple. Urusen can pineapple. Anyway. Uh, Spid says, instructions were unclear. Vincent, I've now drunk super glue and... <laughs> Actually, true story. My best friend in the world, Mike, many years ago, had to get a tube a tube of super glue open. And like a spoon, he put it in his mouth to try and get in his teeth. You can guess what happened. The lid came off and it... <laughs> I had to phone the hospital and say, hi, my friend's just got like a mouthful of super glue because the idiot tried to open it in his mouth, take the lid off. What do you recommend? And he said, basically, just make him chew on a bar of soap with hot water for about 10 minutes and call him a dick. <laughs> Good on the NHS. Call him a dick. <laughs> yes. Uh, I accidentally had some acetone in a small cut on my finger once, says Vincent at Mythstellar's Model Making, while I was cleaning up insulating foam from my hands with a cloth that I had moistened in acetone. Painful as fuck. Yes, it is. I've done that. Was that a Carathrace carapace? <laughs> I'm going to attach the Carathrace on the top. Uh, Spid says on a serious note he used to work as a mechanic cuts grazes skin knuckles and various cellulose thinners brake cleaner etc and much sucking through teeth in agony and swearing yeah standard thinners standard thinners that you'll find in a body shop if you're doing any kind of spray painting or bodywork standard thinners when you've got a little cut on your finger oh, it's not right it's not right trust me standard thinners oh Do you think there's a, Spid says, do you think there's a, a sadist in every R&D department who makes a product and then goes, ooh, how can we make this more dangerous for the user? No, because currently he's working in a specific model comp company, making, ooh, how can we make this build experience the worst possible thing for the user? Probably the same person, he just moves around a bit. Uh, is that good, Vincent? I've only used TET before in Tamiya's cement line. I don't know what that is. This is great for polystyrene. Hey Fox, how goes the skitter? I wasn't here at the start, if you already talked about it. Um, it's going well. The vehicle's not changed at all. The diorama has begun. Uh, there is now a picture frame with foam on it and stuff. Uh, I have learnt, if you want to glue things to gardening oasis foam, don't use super glue, because it just dissolves the foam and doesn't grip. Use PVA glue, or hot glue. Uh, I did put some matte varnish over this before I do anything else to it, and I also learned... If you're making a uh, Tacom AML90, don't spray matte varnish onto the bare rubber tyres. Because they, believe it or not, they've actually got matte varnish on them. Yet they look decidedly shiny and they are tacky. 
the matte varnish just hasn't cured. So I don't know what it is about the the rubber or vinyl in those tyres, it just doesn't want to stick. Now it's not a problem because I'm going to cover it in pigments anyway and dirt and dust so it'll just stick to that and make my life a bit easier. But yeah, just I don't know how you get around that. So there you go. I would probably recommend doing your weathering before you do any matte varnishing just to mat them with enamels and things like that. Uh, do, 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 do. Palm Zero, hey Palm Zero says, what time is it? It's Fox time. What time is it? Sunday morning cartoons. There you go. Hello everyone, says Rody Hobby Corner. Hey Rody. Vincent was asking about the orange top thicker to me or something. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's some funky. It basically, smells nice. I think it's a bit stronger than this stuff. I need to get some more. It's a bit, look at that. Oh, I need to get some more of that. I need to get some more of that. Uh, do, do, do. Yes, it is. Speedy Crate works lovely on bigger parts that have a lot of surface area touching, like big plain build. It's lovely on the wings. Just use some extra thin or cement to fill up the seam. Yes, it's kind of like this stuff. It's a bit thicker, but it smells. I think it's very similar, it's just got a nice orangey smell to it, which is probably not really what you want in a glue because it's attractive smell. But I think it's also like a health and safety thing and it's got some slightly different ingredients. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So talking about glue. Okay, right, where are we up to anyway? So I've got to get some little handy rails, handy grabby rails. Oh, hello. Didn't think it'd go that far. So what little grabby handy rails do I need? I need uh, 119, 115, 120, 100, 200, 300, 324. Yeah, okay. We'll start with the 119 and work our way up. So today we have the task of finding stuff on the sprue with the really hard to read numbers. There's always a hair on these sprues as well. I don't know if that's a Games Workshop thing, but it's not my hair. I haven't got hair that colour. Uh, right, 119, which is 123. There we go, 119. So I should get my god hands, which will be perfect for these little tiny pieces. Uh, like I say, these are these are really best for Gumpler, and I'll find out just how good they are when I do my Gumpler, my Strike Rouge. They're all right for Games Workshop, it's just some of their numbers are a bit thick and a bit high up for these to get to, because they are quite short. Do it on camera, dear quite short nippers handy tip for you if you are doing little things like tubes and rods and trying to get rid of nubs always use a metal file because it it's easier and always work in one direction only especially if it's like a, a whip antenna or something that's likely to bend, bend or flex or break uh, if you do it with a metal file you can get it done with less wibble wobble and go in one direction. If you go like this with it, you'll end up just snapping it. I need something better to hold that way. So let me get my... Uh, all the better to hold you with, my dear. Get my reverse grip tweezers, which seem to have red paint on the end. I don't know why. Please don't ping off. Please don't ping off. Please don't ping off. Yes, there we go. Oh, ping. Yeah, I don't want that to happen. Thank you. So always try and work in one direction. Don't go back and forth. Just because it doesn't really matter so much these little handrails because they're fine. But if you've got like tubes or exhaust pipes, if you're building a car kit and it's got tiny little exhaust pipes and stuff, especially 135th scale, anything like that, you're just asking for trouble. Right, now, there are the instructions. 119 needs to go. Here. Needs to go on here like that, we'll see. Needs to go in there. Is it that way around? Or is it till the way around? It doesn't quite tell me. I'm not quite sure which way it goes. I think that way around. There we go. There we go. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. So just touch your glue on either end. Plonk it in place. Gently release. And then again, just a touch of glue, just to the gap, and that should be more than enough to hold that in place. You really don't need much when you're using Tamir Extra Thin. For things like that, you don't need much at all. Do, 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 do. 
James Lormore's in. Hey, James, it's so good to see you all again. Welcome back. Oh, oh coffee. <sighs> coffee time. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Had an emergency this morning. I had uh, got up to make my traditional enormous cup of coffee. Got up this morning and realised to my horror because my this traditional sized cup of coffee is basically two scoops of coffee and four scoops of sugar because it's basically two cups of coffee and one. So two coffees, four sugars because I only love coffee and two sugars. Had no milk. Burr. Burr. I had to drink black coffee. I put an extra sugar in just to nullify the effect. Really don't know how you Americans out there can drink black coffee. It's horrible stuff. Horrible, horrible stuff. It's all right. It's just not, yeah, not the best. Uh, I keep looking at chat for my instructions instead of looking at my instructions because I'm special. Let's move that out of the way. 120. Where does 120 go? 120 goes in a place. 120, oh, 120 is that. <laughs> That's 120, idiot. 115 is what I need next, apparently. 115. So, 115, anybody's guess. Round and round and round she goes. Where it is, who the hell knows. 123, 100, there we go, 115, there we go. Now, one bit of experience I have had with... Uh, these god hands, and I'm having right now. When I was doing my Lehman Russ, or when I was and when I was doing the skitter as well, and I was using lots of spare little handrails from tank kit from Warhammer tank kits. The one thing I learned is they're a pain in the backside because I had all these little handrails on sprues, and 99% of them you snip the nub to get them off the sprue, and this the handle just snaps. But that was with my Tamiya clippers. So what, there's no, there's just there's no nub on that at all, using those god hands. Um, so using these little god hand nippers, it averts that it doesn't snap the delicate part, and that's all the sanding I need to do on that now. It's just done. Thank you very much, Stein. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Right, where does this one go? This one goes like. It's very hard to see because they give you this kind of side view with the instructions, which doesn't really help that much. So it needs to go there, maybe. One, two, three, four. That way. This way around. There you go. One, two, three, four into the holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, what I might do is just place it in place and then glue it. Another advantage of extra thin cements. I know ammo do an extra thin now as well, which is apparently quite good. So it might be worth checking that out if you're after an extra thin cement and you can get ammo easier than Tamiya. Now Tony will tell you that the ammo extra thin cement can also be used on clear parts that doesn't tend to fog them up if you capillary action it. I can't say I've got experience of that because I've never tried it. And I have to say I'm a little bit doubtful. But not massively. It might be true. And I do appear to have snapped something off here. Something has snapped off, but never mind. I'm sure it will live. Uh, so that's that one on. Now the thing I've not figured out about these knights is how the hell I'm going to transport them if I ever do get to play a game. Because these don't fit. I've got a skirmish case. They don't fit in the skirmish case. You put them on the back, the, the base is... You'd have to buy like a battle case or a crusade case and just have loads of slots through with nothing above them. So, yeah, transporting them might be a bit of a pain in the bum. 121. 121. It's right there. Let's snip this off the sprue. Ooh, let's try and snip this off the sprue. There we go. It's better. To quote Uncle Atom, pachow. For those who have just joined us, uh, if you've not watched one of these before, welcome to Warhammer Sundays with me, Fox, from Model Making Guru. 
if you missed the beginning. Uh, the weekend is when I do my Warhammer stuff. During the week, I do my normal builds, my e-model stuff and my, my Gumplet and thing. That's what I'm starting to do at the moment. I'm changing my routine a bit. So weekdays, I feel like Gumplet and anything else. Weekends is purely my, my Warhammer times. Unless, of course, I do some Elite Dangerous times. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. So what I decided was I would just film my stream. Stream me working on them on a Sunday, 3 p.m. GMT every Sunday. Just for funsies. You may as well join me and have a laugh while I'm working. I'm working on my army, the unholy contrivance. No, the unending forces of the holy contrivance. That's what I'm working on. That's what my army's called. Uh, and they are going to be Principality of Zeon themed in their colours. And in the army, I will have three Imperial Knights, at least three, to start with. One like a Zaku, one like a Goof, and one like Charles Custom. Uh, so for this one, we are building the Knight Errant. And this one will be a Zaku. So this is every Sunday. At the moment, I'm building things. Eventually, it'll get to painting things. It's just like a little two or three hour thing on a Sunday while I'm working. I'll let you pop in and we'll just hang out in the chat. Uh, do make sure if you've not if you've not done so already do make sure to like and subscribe this channel it's not just warhammer stuff and not just this live stream uh, i do do um non-warhammer stuff i do gumplet i do space and sci-fi stuff that's my main thing uh, occasionally military stuff built a u-boat here too in my time so do like and subscribe and make sure to click the notify button so you get notified of every time a video goes up uh, and don't forget, of course, if you'd like to help keep this channel going and help help me out, help support me, uh, do go to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash model making guru, where you can help ensure this channel continues to do what it do. 122 I need next. There are rewards for being a patron. One of which is, uh, if you're the top level subscriber, subscriber or patron, whatever you want to call it, uh, at the top level pledge level, I will actually build and paint either, once every 12 months, either a Master Grade Gumpler, with a few exceptions, or a Warhammer Kit of your choice, again with a few restrictions and exceptions, to my absolute best skill level 5 level, for you to have forever for free. Normally many, many hundreds of pounds worth of work and expensive shipping can be yours for absolutely free just by being a, a patron at the top tier for 12 months so do go and check it out there's lots of other things reasons to hang out ultimately it just helps keep the lights on here and keeps me doing what i'm doing and helps me out bigly so do feel free to go and check it out it's completely optional you don't have to if you are watching outside of youtube uh, if you can't see the live chat right now because you're on say watching through discord or facebook or patreon or somewhere else you're not actually in youtube itself click on the little youtube icon at the bottom right hand corner of the video somewhere down here uh, and it will take you to the youtube page where you can join in the live chat on most devices uh, we'll be giving away some stickers and other things later on so it is worth being in the chat plus everybody in chat is awesome it's a nice place to hang out and just have a good laugh uh, the real reason for these sort of streams is I may as well stream it while I'm doing it, but at the same time it's just a chance for you guys to hang out and have a good time and get to know everybody. So we're all friends in the chat. Join in. Do, do, do. However, if you have been watching the start, you can ignore all that because you already know all that. So there you go. Eee, right, we'll get these on and then we'll have a quick look at the chat and a brief pause and a look at the chat and things. What else has been going on that I can tell you about? Uh, Mumpai Remo T. I'm losing my shit with the broadband company. Uh, neighbour next door who had the building work done. It was all roofing work. Uh, which looks really good. It's all done now. Although her dad was up on the ladder the other day and he said, well, the builders say it's complete, but the surveyor says it's not complete. And now we don't know what to do. Because it was the surveyor's first ever job, first ever day. So do we go to what the surveyor says? Because the builders say it's done, there's nothing more to be done. It's like, oh, that doesn't sound good. Now I may have to do a bit more filing on these once I've let the glue settle. Because I've just noticed little rough spots here and there. So 
Sand, 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 sanding is anyone up the way. Plus, if you didn't come in at the start, you miss out on the awesome opening music, which will be the same every week. You know it will be the same every week. Because what other music could it possibly be? You know what it's going to be every week. Little tiny handles going into holes. This is quite fun to do because you can't screw it up in any way, shape or form unless you eat the piece with your face. And then you're an idiot. So I can't help you with that. Pretty much. Uh, was that 123 or 124? That was 123. Next, if you need one, a 24. Always put the lid back on your glue between dips because it will give you headaches and ing very, very quickly. One of the things I love about Bandai kits, since I started doing Gumplet and other stuff for Bandai kits, is because you're not really using glue. You'd be surprised how few headaches I get. Because when I do something like this, when I sit at the bench, I'm, I always sit here and say, you know, take a break every hour, make sure you put the lid back on and all this kind of stuff. And I have to give the good advice. But I don't actually follow my own advice. So I will sit here for 9, 10, 11 hours straight working. And I'll forget to put the lid on and things like that. So things like glue, it's like, by the end of the day, I've just got raging headache time. So, with non-glue kits, it's actually quite refreshing because you don't get the glue headaches. You don't get all the fumes. The worst you get is maybe some fumes from paint, but that's not that bad. If you're using water-based acrylics, whoops, Daisy, you don't tend to get horrible, nasty fumes all the time that make you feel headachey and ill. Uh, that's those on. Let's do the next ones. The next ones are that and that. Da, 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 da. 118 and 117. <sighs> 118. There it is. Let's stick it on to the holes. Random fact about me, you might not know, just to fill the time. My dad used to work for Granada TV, our local TV company. And I used to write music. And he said to me one day, write some music for like the local news program for Granada tonight, the local news program. I'll take it in on tape and listen to it. This was the days of tapes. So I wrote this news theme. Uh, and it, it was terrible. It was pretty terrible. The only thing that made me proud about it was that the end, the last note had a real kind of 1980s Brookside feel to it. If you don't live in the UK, you won't know what that means. Anyway, it was a terrible piece of music. So my dad took the tape in. Surprisingly, they didn't use it. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. This is just a pointless little story. Does lead me on to the subject of music and videos though because a lot of people a lot of you guys do actually ask me because there's actually a lot of you out there who want to start youtubing who have started doing your own youtubes and stuff and it's not necessarily about models it might be about video games or whatever you want to do but i do get a lot of questions about you know doing videos and stuff and i'm on the wrong page and i keep looking at the chat for the instructions I do get lots of questions about, you know, making videos. What, how, how do you do lighting? How do you... Oh, I forgot to say, by the way, if you want to ask a question, uh, as always, if you want to ask me a question, I've got the chat right here, but just so I can see it, if you need to ask a question, put it in big, fat capital letters so I can, I'm less likely to miss it. Uh, there is always the super chat option, the little symbol just there under the chat, uh, next to the smiley face. Click on that if you want to use a super chat, and it'll put your chat in a big coloured box, and there's no physical way I can miss it then. Um, but yeah, I do get a lot of questions about doing videos and stuff and the one thing I always have to explain to people that so many people just do not seem to understand is copyright music and things like that uh, what you can and can't use so if you want to make YouTube videos and you want music in your videos 
the basic rule is if you want to use a piece of music in your video the website that you got it from does it say this is public domain music if it does you can use it no problem if it doesn't this isn't going to go in if it doesn't say this is specifically public domain music then does it perhaps say this is creative commons music like maybe an attribution license where all you need to do is credit the composer if it does you can use it just make sure to credit the composer either in the credits for your video Ask the credits for your video or in the description of the video and you'll be fine did you write the music yourself and compose it yourself and record it yourself in which case you can use it it's fine any other music that doesn't meet those criteria if it doesn't say public domain, if it doesn't say some sort of Creative Commons license where you have to do some kind of attribution for the creator, and if it isn't something you've composed yourself, don't use it. Especially if it's music, you know, chart music, current music, popular music, whatever, from your favourite band. Because all that will happen is your video will go up and it'll either be very quickly pulled or muted because you haven't got the rights to copyright or uh, well it'll either be pulled straight away and it'll say sorry you've got copyright music in there we can't publish this video or they might publish it but mute the sound and you have to re-upload it again or in some cases if the copyright holder has requested revenue sharing and you're monetized then it may be that they have the video there and you're allowed to have it up with the sound but half the profit from the video goes to whoever owns the copyright so but more likely is that you just get the video pulled or muted it may also be that further down the line somebody disputes the copyright files a dispute with YouTube saying hey that's my PC music they're using it without my permission in which case then dispute starts if you get three strikes if YouTube gets a copyright claim and finds against you three times, your channel is completely deleted. Every bit of content. And if you start a new channel, you have to start from scratch. So it's just not worth it. Make sure it's public domain, creative commons, or something you did yourself. This also applies to one of my personal pet peeves with people that do videos like we do. You know, like how to do things and like workbench videos don't have the TV or the radio on in the background playing music because A, it's as unprofessional as you can get. It's terrible. It's horrible because you might have the radio playing or your, a CD playing of your favourite tune or whatever. Not everybody likes your music that you, you like. But also, it just considers it as copyrighted music and you'll still get your video pulled. So, turn off your telly, turn off your radio or your mp3 player or whatever music source you've got just stick to those three i just thought i'd put that in there because it's something to talk about basically something to talk about while we're working i'm lucky because all the music i use pretty much is either <laughs> composed and written by me in which case pff, i own the copyright but i also put it all in the public domain or uh, I use somebody like Kevin McLeod over at Incompetech.com. He's a great musician that has a ton of music specifically for people to use in YouTube videos and things because it's all Creative Commons, which means all you have to do is give him a credit. Credit him as the rights holder and he happily let you use it. So do your research don't go onto one of these websites that says pay us some money and you can have access to all this copyright free music because what you find is you won't because they have a lot of stuff that they hold the rights to 
but they've also submitted their music to YouTube so that YouTube can pick it out if somebody tries to use it without permission. And what happens there is either their own copyright trips up and you get uh, a dispute filed, which is usually cleared up quite quickly, or they think they have the rights to the music, but they actually don't. And also, you have to pay for it. So why pay for something when you can get it for free? That's the more pertinent argument. Anyway, that's those railings glued on. I think that's all the railings now. Do 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 do. We shall glue on the little eagly eagle. Now what I'm going to use for this is just the uh, the Aquila. There is one with the scroll underneath, but I'll be buggered if I can be asked trying to write little tiny words on scrolls. So they're going to get... I know it's not really anything to do with Xeon. But they have to have the Aquila, obviously, because it is still Warhammer. So we'll get that on there. So um, I do apologise if I keep doing stuff off camera, by the way. I've got my little marker here to where the middle of the screen is, but as you well know, I often forget where that is. We'll get this stuck on. Uh, and get the door put on the front. And I think it's time. What time have we been going for? We were going for one hour, almost one twenty minutes. It takes time then to give some stuff away. Yeah, stick times. And announce the winner from last week, obviously, as well. So again, if you're watching this somewhere where there's no actual access to the chat, and you want to be in a chance in with the chance of winning a sticker, uh, make sure to click on the little YouTube icon on the bottom right of the player down here somewhere, and that will take you to the YouTube channel where this is streaming, and you can access the live chat. Also, you should be doing that anyway, because it's fun. Everybody likes live chat. Live chat's awesome. It's full of cool kids. All the cool kids go into live chat, don't you? All you guys in chat, you're all cool, aren't you? You guys all rock. I need to file that a bit more once it's on there, but it should be fine. Yes, I'm going to try and avoid painting parchments and scrolls because you have to put wording on those and it's really hard. So that's that on. Anything else to come on? Oh, you've got to do the door. Get this door on there. Doodle doodle do do. Doodle doodle do do. Oh, tight corner. Okay, I'm going to use other clippers for these. The thing with the, uh, the god hands is you don't want to use the tips of the cutting bits. Because they can easily, if you use the very tips of the blades, I've lost the piece I was gluing now, uh, cutting. If you use the very tips of the blades, they can actually snap or damage. So I don't want to use them on a bit where I have to use the very tips, like here to get into that corner, if I can avoid it. So for these, using my Citadel ones, which are not as good. Then we'll have a look at what the chat's doing, have a quick breaky break. Have a look at what chat's doing and do some giveaways. And that little one there, which is a tiny little nub. Danny, Danny nub. Danny, Danny nub. We will go away with a rub of the sanding stick. I hope you will. I don't know where I'm going with this one. Danny, Danny nub. This goes around this way, you see. This will fit in. So I like the fact they give you this door, but there's no actual interior. <coughs> Excuse me, tickly cough. There's no actual interior in there. Well, I'm sure there are probably like third party or, you know, resin 
conversion kits that have interior or maybe there's a forge wheel kit that gives you the interior It'd be quite cool if there was if there is so I'm putting the glue on the inside here just for neatness because I can go in quite heavy with it and it won't splooge out over the top so that's the the pilot's door done and all the little tubes and pipes and that so that will eventually just sit on the top here like that you see outstanding marine and it just fits really nicely you wouldn't actually have to glue it if you didn't want to but i'm going to leave that off for painty painty uh I do at some point need to figure out how to sort out the pauldron so the pauldron can sit on here but can come off easily because what I want to do is when I do try if I do I, I, I somehow get a game and I want to transport it I'll need to be able to take the arms off but I can't really I might not be able to do that while the pauldrons are on so we'll have to have a look and see I'll have to figure that out right let's take a little wee break uh, let's see what the chat is doing so and we'll do some stickery giveaways Little smoke -o break for me, little chatty chat with you guys. Let's see what we're doing. So, I've probably missed loads of chat by now. Let's find out where we're up to. Remember, if you want to ask a question, stick it in big fat capital letters so I can see it, or use the super chat. Do, 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 do. Wow, I've got loads of chat to go through. Ooh. Uh. Uh. There we go. I'm sorry for wrong spelling, says Jacob. Don't worry about it. I know English perhaps isn't your first native language, so don't worry about it at all. Toys, shots fired, says Spiddy Quaid. I missed that. If you're going to get high on the product, says Spid, may as well smell good. Yeah. Uh, Vincent says it's really easy to leave it open and not notice it because of the citrus smell. That's going back to the TET glue, the orange topped Tamiya glue. Uh, do, 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 do. Mike Mount says, I'm now home, back at it with my seven-class lifeboat and chopper. Ooh, your chopper, eh? Are you going to borrow Dave's boning tool? Boning tool. Coffee is good for the soul, says James Lurimore. Yes. Cutting fine parts of sprues can sometimes work if you put the part and sprue into some blue tack before cutting. Well, that's true, if it's a little delicate part. Uh, for some really delicate parts, you can actually get very fine saws as well, which sometimes are a little less stressful than actual nipper type devices uh, I love black coffee the blacker the better you it's not bad it's just I'd much rather have milk in my coffee and sugar to make it sweet I have an espresso maker and always drink my coffee black and unsweetened says Tony best way to drink it roadie and you spit it out because spit's big on his coffee spit's got like an industrial coffee machine that he's rebuilding back to scratch did you get it sorted out for single phase spit or are you still He's still trying to figure out how to get it wired up with a three-phase wiring. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Nimson Durin, I like to drink coffee with my cre with cream and sugar. Gwinnell says, it's all good as long as the surface is smooth. Even if it's matte paint, Microsoft will help it settle if you have some. Have I missed something in the chat there? Oh, Gwinnell says, I just realised I'm putting decals on a piece that is not varnished. How bad is it? Uh, it's not too bad not too bad when I did the <coughs> when I did the decals on this it wasn't varnished there's no varnish on that so if they're not massive decals and there's not lots of film around them you'd probably be all right as long as you use lots of microsol and microset like he says you'd probably be fine it's just ideally you want them gloss varnished <laughs> but if you already put it on don't worry about it if it does go wrong just cover it with weathering uh, go napkins before it closes and pick up a flight case with foam in for quite cheap says Jerry uh, oh I think he's talking about like transporting this yeah if we get a cheap flight case I do like I've got a little skirmish box for my things and I do like it it's really good but it's just not big enough for you know I could get maybe one Lehman Russ in there and all my dudes I'm going to get to get more maybe I'll get a battle case or something but it's partially because I need to transport them, but also partly it's somewhere to store them, because otherwise I'm going to have to fill a shelf with them, and I haven't got the shelf space. So all my, like, 8 million dudes are in one box at the minute, and I can stack them, so. Uh, 
Uh, Tony's right, I mean, specifically got some and build a lot of car kits. Bob Smith Super Gold CA also works on canopies and clear parts. Oh, for gluing, when I was saying that the um, Ammo by Meg thin glue works on clear parts as well. Yep, or if you want to be really safe, absolutely safe, just get yourself some canopy glue, which is, I think, canopy glue is just very thin PVA glue. Uh, there are lots of non Warhammer branded cases you might want to look at, Fox. There's, there's a number for stuff like tanks and titans and quit and stuff. Yeah, I'll have a look. I've, I've been looking around at them, but at the moment I can't afford it. Uh, and all my big stuff like my knights and my vehicles can just go on the shelf for the time being. Uh, how are the Revel Star Wars kits, if anyone knows? Rat Pack 30. If you can get the Bandai ones instead, get the Bandai ones. They're alright, but they are aimed at kids, so. They can vary from actually quite good to just terrible. Um, don't expect, unless it's the master kits, the master kits like the Falcon uh, and some of the other ones, they're actually just the fine molds kits reboxed. So if it's the master kit, they're brilliant because they're fine molds. They're, uh, fine molds doesn't have the license to make Star Wars kits anymore, so all their like, you know, 170 second scale Falcon and stuff, they can't produce them. But they can if they if they box it as Revell and then give them to Revell to sell. So. Uh, the Master Series ones are good, because they're fine mods. The rest of them, they're just fun little kits. They're not anything... You could you could do a lot of work to make them look fantastic, but they're not the best in the world. If you can get a Bandai equivalent, you'll have much more fun. They're much better and accurate. Uh, they are okay for what you pay for them, says, says Smoot. Yeah, kind of what I'm saying. They're, they're like cheap little things. Uh, Spid says, the great rat pack building an ATRT now, and I've built three different tyres. Worst bit is the scales aren't consistent. The tyre builds are on my channel. Yeah, that's the thing they... they Ravel do box scale, which is big enough to fit in the box. Uh, really like the Bandai version. We're thinking of getting the Ravel tie uh, OGX wing, unless it's unless it's shite. If you can get the Bandai one, get the Bandai one. It's much better. But if you can't, the Ravel one, you can do a bit of work to it, and it'll be fine. Uh, I just kind of wish. Somebody would have just given Bandai the license to do the Revell stuff, the Star Wars stuff around the world, and then everybody would have access to excellent Star Wars models. The Earl D has filled his last seam on the body. Yay! I used to hate facial hair, but it grew on me, says James. Do, do, do. Let's have a look. Should I stop and get them off, or should I continue, says Grinnell, uh, with the decals? Just leave them on. It's less. Because if you take them off. You're gonna to have to let gloss varnish sit for hours to cure, so just leave them on. Just make sure go with the with the solder set. Make sure to just keep the solder set on the decal. Don't go onto the paint too much because you don't want to reactivate the paint. Uh, and you'll be fine. If they're only little ones, it's fine. If it's like a big stripe all the way down a motorbike tank, yeah, yeah, then that's kind of major. If it's little decals, you'll be fine. And like I say, if it doesn't quite work, weather over it. Uh, for confirming to curves and sole doesn't work, try X28 and if that doesn't work, extra thin. Yeah, that'd be good, unless you've not got varnish over the paint, in which case you might just eat up the paint. Uh, you have to bear in mind, because some of the advice there is try this and that, you have to bear in mind she's doing it over bare paint. So anything that's solvent, anything like, you know, the glues and stuff, it's just going to destroy the paint finish. So, I'd just say, get yourself some cotton boards or a warm damp towel, make sure it's pressed down. Just give it time to dry and go with your sol and set. Well, you, whichever the red one is. Which is the red one? The red one is micro sol. Carefully do that, and you should be fine. You should be fine. I'll, like I say, on the on the skitter. Let's just see if I can get the turret out without breaking it. On the skitter, I did the ones on the side there, and the one on the back. That was just put straight onto the onto the paint, the acrylic paint. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. As long as they're not massive, and they've not got. If they're really crappy decals with massive loads of clear film, then yeah, okay. <coughs> Might have some work. Uh, let's have a look. Nim says he's just dealing with his left hand cramping, which is the hand I hold everything when I sand. Yeah. Lefties unite, says James. Yeah, but if he holds it in his left hand, he's sanding it with his right hand, so he's right handed. Don't. <coughs> Tickly cough today. Streams in. Stream says hello from France, guys and girls. Bonjour, Stream. Comment ça va? Uh, hello Francis Smoo Mr Loth Fox when will you get started on Yamato Yamato still a chance to catch up with me as my lazy ass still needs to paint the little fighters at some point I will I've got to do I've got to finish this one for models I've got to do 
uh, the Strike Rouge because that's a Patreon reward. So that's next. Uh, and then I've got to do something that I can sell because I need to get some money coming in. So I'm a bit skint at the minute, a bit on my arse right now. So I need to get building stuff that I can sell. So it's kind of on the back burner for now. Plus, when I do build it, it's three feet long. I'm going to have to get a case made for it to put it in a display case. So it's when I can afford to get the display case made as well. Uh, hello from Norway people, says Multi Demon. Hello. I would say hello in Norwegian, but I don't know what that is. Hey, oh, says James Lermo. Hello, Norway. Hi from Scotland, says Smoo. I ate eight. Uh, do, do, do. One big question about Warhammer. Can you play with custom made models like Kitbashed and stuff? I'm new to the gaming side of Warhammer. It depends where you're playing. If you're. If you just play with friends. It doesn't matter because, like, you know, I could take this thing, which is a Tacoma ML90 135th kit, and I would just say this is a custom made kit, but I'm giving it the rules of whatever, a Lehman Russ or a Land Raider or something. You just give it rules of an existing Warhammer vehicle, and you just all agree this cool model is a Land Raider. A lot of people who play um, uh, Death Call or Krieg use 135th German World War II tanks as their tanks, but they just give them stats for an existing Warhammer vehicle. Uh, if you play at a Warhammer store, if that's the only place you can play, then they might be a bit iffy about that. And some of them are, some of them are cool, some of them don't care, but some are. And if you're playing anywhere where they're really like, it has to be all spot on, especially tournament play, then yeah, you can't. If you were to go to, say, Warhammer World and try and play on one of the tables, they'd be like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> no. So it doesn't, doesn't really, if you just play with mates, it doesn't matter. But it's worth, you know, I would just say build your army up however you want. And if you know if you go somewhere, there's oh you can't use that model, then they're a bit up their own arse anyway. So do you really want to play with them? Most people will be like, look, I don't care what the model looks like. We'll just give it the rules of a Lehman Russ or an existing Warhammer vehicle. Like you taking a, a 135th Abrams with some Warhammer dudes on it, all painted up to be Warhammery, and just say it's a Bane blade, and you just treat it as a Bane blade, and you give it the same weapon. You just say the cannon is the same, and you just give it the same stats and figures and weaponry. It's fine. Most people would be fine with it. Some game, some might like my local games workshop store, or Warhammer store. They're like, I don't care what you bring in. <laughs> Doesn't matter. But if you go to like, you know, Warhammer World or an official tournament or anywhere official, like your local gaming club, if you kind of mates all the people in your local gaming club, you say, listen, I'm just going to play this. Is that all right? We'll make it a Bane Blade. They'll be like, yeah, no worries. But if they do go, oh, I'm afraid you can't use that, it's got custom parts on it. Yeah, you don't want to play with them, because they're obviously going to be that guy anyway. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I haven't yet played it. I've had one little five, ten minute demo of a war actual playing Warhammer in my local store with the guy that was there filling in. It was it was great fun. It was just like a group of Space Marines and a group of Chaos Marines. And it was great fun. I'm hoping that once I've got my armor built, I actually get to play a game. But there's no local clubs near me, or there is a few, but they seem to focus mostly on tabletop games. Like board games and stuff uh, there's no real local scene I can go to my local store and play there but it's only a few hours and I don't have any friends that play it and I've got nowhere at home to set up a table so I might never actually get to play but I'll have a cool army uh, Friesland says Eater uh, hey Belgium salute cousin Belge cousin Belge says Strum Belgian beer for the win no English ale for the win I know Belgian beer's strong, and you get like a little demi, and it's like 10 pints, but nah. Much prefer, much prefer proper dark ales. Uh, do, do, do. YouTube can go to hell, says Palmer Zero. They deleted all my games and painting videos because someone flagged it as porn when it was Battlefield and Game Walkthrough. Only my crappy videos were spared. You should dis uh, dispute it. Um, it depends, though. Do bear in mind... If they, specific, if they specifically said these have been flagged as porn and deleted them, you can dispute it and they can put them back. Um, but it could also be the game developer may have said, I don't want people showing my gameplay because all the music copyright and the license doesn't allow it. Uh, it could be a number of other different things. Uh, it could be that you're playing it, but perhaps you had music playing in the background. That gets so many people. Uh, sometimes they can pull videos because of foul language as well. So do keep that in mind. Uh, and there is a thing at the moment with like videos that show violence, especially like video games. It's they're still working their system out. Uh, Gaza says, "I like your work, Fox. Thank you very much, Gaza." Uh, 
uh, whoop, sticky stickers. Oh, we're doing the stickers, aren't we? I forgot about that. Hello. <laughs> right, let's do some sticker giveaways. Um, I've kind of only got like one or two of the Skipper Ted ones left. So I'm going to leave them for now. So what we'll do is I've got loads of these and I've got a few of the Team Annette ones. So we're giving away. What I'm doing from now on, I think I've done it for the last lot of stickers now, is just send one of each. Because I've got a load of these and I've got a load of these. We'll just rather than send you one sticker, I'll rather send you two of these or you know one of each, just as long as I've got some more of these. So you probably get one or two stickers. One of each. Uh, and all we're going to do is I'm going to ask a question and I'll take the first answer. We'll win the stickers. Now I think last week, I've only had one mail from one person last week saying they won the stickers. So there's two of you out there that haven't actually mailed me your name and address yet. Now I do send the stickers out en masse. I probably do them once or twice a month. So it's usually a couple of weeks or three between when you win and when I get send the stickers out. Because I'll the ones in the UK I can nip to the post box at the end of the road. The ones outside the UK, I have to go to the post office. That's usually once or twice a month. So don't worry if you've not turned up yet. I think most of them have gone out now. There's nobody left apart from people that won last week. But I have got a couple of you who haven't mailed in. So what do we do? Well, dead easy. All I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, and when I say go, you need to type your answer in the chat. So if you're watching and there's no live chat, press the little YouTube icon on the bottom of the screen. And you'll be on the YouTube page where the chat is. Uh, I will take the first person I see that gets the answer correct. And keep in mind... I've reorganised the chat now, so it's more real time. Before we do anything, refresh your page right now. Because the longer you watch, the more laggy it can get. So just refresh your, the page right now. I'll wait for you for a minute. And then it should hopefully be up to date. Oh. Refresh your page and pull the bar all the way to the right-hand side. I'll give you a minute. Uh, now, yeah, so I will see the first name on here. Now, bear in mind, when you see it, you see it tailored to you. I see it, the order it is received at YouTube. So what you see in chat may not match what I see, but it's there. You can see it here. Anyway. Right, so I should give it a minute. While I think of a question... Oh. I'll well, think of a question now, haven't I? Can't think of a question because I am an idiot. Da, 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 da. I, my brain has stopped and it never works anyway. <sighs> okay. Let's do our first question. Somebody came in chat. Brian Costello came in. Brian, you're just in time for the giveaways. Now, if you've won stickers before, you're more than welcome to have more. I can send you millions of them if you want. You can win a million times. Um, if you don't want any more stickers, though, and you've already got some, just don't answer. Let everybody else have a quick go. So, first question today. Uh, is earlier on we discussed stabbing yourself with knives and things like I always do uh, what was the model making product or the, the, the building product that I said you can use to seal a wound go I know if you weren't watching earlier you would have missed that but I'll make sure the other questions are cool so where are we Ooh, I've got to scroll up the text, might be a good idea. Wow, you all answer that fast. See how I've got all the answers straight away. Uh, first one in is... Make sure it is the first one. Uh, Brian Costello says super glue. Well done, Brian. Send me an email. I'll put the email in the chat. Hang on. You all know it by now anyway, but let me type it in on my loudest keyboard in the world. Uh, it is. Wow, I spelled that all wrong. Uh, model made, oh, I spelt it wrong, uh, hang on, it is modelmakingguru at gmail.com, just send me an email with your name and your address and I'll get some stickers sent out to you, well done Brian, do, 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 do. I, have, I have tweaked all the chat and stuff now so it should be more real time for you, so there should be less buffering as well, if you do ever get any problems with the video by the way, buffering and jumping and lagging, do let me know, because I don't know. I can't watch this while I'm streaming. And it may not be the stream anyway. Right, let's do another question. <sighs> Got to think of a question. Bugger. Can't think of a question now. Um, okay. Uh, you know, coming up with questions is really, really hard. It really is quite hard coming up with questions. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Okay, my Imperial Skitter that I'm converting to the Warhammers. I've told you this a few times now in the stream today. What scale is it? 
go. Somebody said duct tape for sealing a wound. That would probably work. <laughs> I just wouldn't like to pull it off if you were. Uh, first one in is 135th says Jerry. Well done, Jerry. You have one yourself, a mess of stickers. Uh, so, yes, Jerry, send me an email with your name and your address, and I'll get some stickers sent off to you. Uh, Tony Blackwell says, Brian, it comes up in a different order than Fox's computer. What did Brian say? Where are you, Brian? What was your comment? Do, 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 do. Oh, is there not Gwendolyn ahead of me? Uh, no, it, it, I receive the comments in the order YouTube receives them, whereas when you see them, it's going to be slightly different. I'll just double-check there. Uh, I know, she came up after. Yeah, so you see it tailored to you, so you're going to see a chat. This is what I've got on screen, so you can see it as well. So, uh, yes, whoever just won that, I've forgotten already. Brilliant. Uh, Jerry says 135th. So, Jerry, send me an email. I will send you a test stickers. I've got a handful of these left, so we'll send you one of each. Um, I've just had an email, and that email was from... From Brian Costello, jolly good. Who says stickers? Dead loudly. <coughs> okay, so last one. We're going to do our usual back of the hand sharpie. You know what this is going to be. You know what this is. This is when I can't think of questions and I'm just being a lazy ass. So I'm going to write a number on my hand. Okay, I have written a number on my hand. Are you all ready? And it is a number between, and I've learnt not to give you a massive range, because the first time I did this I gave you like a 30 number range, and it took like about half an hour. Uh, it is a number between 119 and 129. Go. Everybody's putting 69, you're all just filthy dirty little buggers. Filthy dirty. Do 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 Nobody's got it yet. Bam, there we go. Jordan Nash, 123. Jordan Nash has 123. Well done. Do 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 123, Jordan. Excellent, well done. You win yourself some stickery stickers. Get me the email with the name and the address. I probably already got it. I think I've already got it anyway, but send it again anyway. With the name and the address. And we will get you the stickers sent out. Cool beans! Right, that sticker's done. Now it is the important time now. It is the important... Jordan Nash says, yay! Uh, somebody says, seems like his answers come up long before you ask the question. Some people actually start asking before the question. But remember, before I start doing the asking the questions bit, refresh the page. It will refresh the YouTube stream and drag the slider right across to the right. Uh, it may well be that you've just got lag, unfortunately. Uh, there's no way around that. That's how the internet works. Sadly, unfortunately, we can't do anything about that. But refreshing the page, the, the longer you watch a YouTube video, uh, you get what's called memory leak and you get other things as well. So it can get more laggy and you get more buffering and sometimes the chat and stuff goes out of sync. So always refresh the page. That's why I'll always give you a minute or so before I start doing the question so you can refresh the page and drag it across the right to catch up. But sometimes there's always lag. But it's just a bit of fun. Just I'll be doing this every week, so don't worry. There's always be a chance to win. Um, right, so we need to do the giveaway from last week. So if you remember, the giveaway is this rather lovely, lovely Warhammer journal. I've got another one to give away. It's basically that. With I've, I've sealed it up now. It's just like this, but without the crappy handwriting. Uh, and let's see who won this. Now, I'm going to try something cool this week. I'm going to try and do it live on the telly. Because normally I just do it in advance. Like when we do the e-models stream, I just do it just before because we can't show doing it but we use the same system so i'm going to try it live on the telly now i'm going to have to look away at the other monitor so i might go a bit quiet so let's get this done right so i need to move that over there and i need to swap to bam 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 look at that it's the sky look at this it's awesome it's realistic and everything it's like it's like a real internet Cool. I'm pointing at the camera, but you can't see me. Can you all see that on screen now, just so I can make sure, because I can't see the stream. Are you all seeing my YouTube page now with an advert for Grammarly because I have to turn adverts off when I'm streaming this? So just before I go ahead and do it, let me just, just tell me you can actually see uh, the YouTube page. Can you see that? I'm scrolling up and down. Scrolling up and down. Yes, says James. Brilliant. Fantastic. Now, last week uh, I asked you 
to come up with a name for my elite dangerous ship, which is an ASP Explorer. Uh, now, I have actually already, somebody actually gave me a name in last week's episode, and it was so good I, I kept it. I, can't, I think it might have been stream where somebody said, um, can I whoop ASP? And I've actually named it that because it's a great name. But it doesn't matter uh, which one I picked because I, I should do that. It was just to get the silly answers. So, let's have a look. We've got uh, Aspirations of Grandeur. We've got Asp, the awesome Axolotl. I like the word Axolotl. I like Axolotl. Axolotls are cool. Tim the Enchanter from the Orc Boys. Works for me. Uh, Dat Asp. Oh, I might change it to Dat Asp, actually. I might do. Just from Renata there. I might change it to Dat Asp. This isn't... I'm not... The winner is not whoever I choose to name my ship. I'm just doing that anyway. I'll pull the winner in a minute. But I like Dat Asp. I might have to change that. Uh, Bucket of Asp. Asp Iring Ineptitude. Grasp Hopper. I like that. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Jerry says, sadly, I missed the live show. And I said, well, you can still enter anyway. And then you didn't, Jerry. But hey, you got some stickers. Jasper the Trespasser. HMS Aspected Fail. Asp About Space. Aspect of War. USS Ted. <laughs> uh... I'm very bad with names, but here are some random letters that, su that stuck. Aspermamus the 23rd. So lots of good entries there. I'll probably go with... Well, I've got kind of whoop asp, but I might actually change it to dat asp. So, but anyway, let's pick a winner. Let's pick a winner. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take the URL for last week's stream. We're going to paste it in there. We're going to load the comments. And then we're going to randomly, random, I don't know why I'm pointing at the camera, you can't see it, randomly pick a winner. So, the winner of this gorgeous book is... Kaplunk, Tony Blackwell, Bucket of Asp. Well done, Tony. You've won yourself. I'll just, I'll turn, I'll turn back to normal screen. Hang on. I can close that down now. Where's my mouse? Hang on, I've got mouse issues. Hang on a minute. No, we're... Where's my mouse? There we go. Right, we are back. I can close that window down because I can't. There we go. So, Tony Blackwell, well done. You've won yourself this lovely, lovely little journal. You can use it for whatever you want. I do recommend you use as illegible writing as possible because it seems a shame to fill such a lovely little notebook with beautiful calligraphy and thoughtful words when you can just fill it with random ramblings and um, yeah, bad handwriting. So, well done, Tony. Uh, I will drop me an email with your name, address, and I think you're in the UK. But if you're outside the UK, include a phone number, because I might need to put that on the shipping details. I think you're in the UK. I'm pretty sure you are. You probably aren't. I, I don't know where people are. Uh, you'd be surprised how many people I know with names that make me think they're in the UK, and they're actually in, like, Spain or somewhere, or France or space. So, yeah, drop me an email with your name, address, and potentially phone number if you need it. If you need to, and I'll get that sent off to you. And I'll get that done this week. So you get that in the next few days, hopefully. So well done. Uh, I don't know when we'll have more actual giveaway stuff. I'm hoping to do as many as I can on these live streams because I like giving stuff away. The only thing is, of course, I generally have to either be given it by a, somebody to give away, so like a retailer or a manufacturer or something, or I have to buy it out of my own pocket and I can't afford to do it all the time. So as, as and when I can, I'll try and do lots of cool, fun giveaways. If you are a retailer or a manufacturer, because I don't know, you know, what all of you do out there that that do w watch this stuff if any of you out there are a manufacturer or a retailer and you have products uh, do feel free to give me a shout and send me stuff to give away on the stream i'll give away anything i'll give away anything you could give me a, a gardening set you could give me a pack of 300 pipettes or a lag a rack of lamp though no, don't send me food i can't post food you could send me a, a box set of really crap 1990s soap opera. I don't matter what it is. Send me something. I'll give it away on the stream. So they. Or even anybody watching, if you've got something dumb that I can give away, like remember how I gave away my dinosaur cup? If you've got something dumb that you're happy to have as a give, make a giveaway prize, drop me a line. I'll give you the address. Send it in, and we'll give it away as a prize. So there you go. The sillier and dumber, the better. But no food, obviously, and drugs, obviously not. And alcohol. I could probably send beer, but I can't guarantee I wouldn't drink it first. Uh, Zadster says, I didn't enter because I blagged an E-Models mug. It's an E-Models thing. E-Models has nothing to do with it. should have entered anyway. Because I am I do the E-Models stream, but I don't work for E-Models. This has nothing to do with E-Models. You're, you're crazy fool. You could have won that lovely book. Who knows whether we'll have any prizes as good as that from now on. It might be like dog-eared copy of 
flipping Train Enthusiast magazine 1975 next time, depending on what people send me. <sighs> uh, but yes, Chris uh, Gross Models. Hello, has it started yet? Yes, you missed everything, sorry. Uh, I didn't manage to watch the stream between then and now, so I didn't hear the question, but as you said, got me some stickers. Yay, says Jerry. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, not fudge, because that would never get to the post box. Not a chance. I could send you some jewellery, says Scott Sutherland. Love, feel free. Uh, it's a free advert for your for your employer. Uh, I just wanted to share the love, says Zanster. I have a rarity pony that I went to, went to do a... There. I have a rarity pony that went to a play do kit. Says James. Uh, who's building the nub-ridden transformer? You'll have screwed up my build. I need to modify it now, says Nate Bliss. It's Grinnell that's doing the nubicorn. Chris the Pyro, has anyone seen the P Bandai Ground Gundam with Parachute Pack? I really want one. Uh, is that the GM Ground Gundam? Uh, it's fun to watch either both show, to be honest, says Adster. Yeah. You don't have to be in it. You don't have to, you know. You don't have to watch these things just to win the prize. There won't always be prize, like I say. Really, I'm just looking for people who are retailers or manufacturers and stuff. If you wanted me to give stuff away, it's a free ad for your product or whatever it is. Do Feel free. Absolutely free. Oh. Anyway. I mean, what I'll sometimes do as well is... Whenever I've done a giveaway, it's because somebody sent it to me as a prize to give away. Uh, or I've been given something free anyway by a... Yeah, you know, company or something, um, or it's something that I've actually bought myself. But maybe it's something that's like when I did um, a couple of the kits I've given away. It's stuff that's been in my stash for a while, and I know I'm never going to get around to it. So I may as well let one of you guys have the fun with the Master Grade Unicorn full armor that I gave away. I got halfway through painting that and gave it the will to live, so I gave that away. So, so yeah, sometimes I'll give stuff away. So we'll see what we can do. I'll try and do as many giveaways on this show as possible because I like doing. It. I like giving you guys stuff, even if it's just silly little stickers. Da, da, da. Spid says, better than a well-thumbed dog-eared Razzle from 1975. Yeah, because Razzle in 1975 is really tame. It's not... There's, there's no there's no mileage there. Details email, says Tony. Thank you. Uh, ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. Right, let's do some more work, shall we? Now we've done some giveaway stuff. This is where half the people tune out now, because they've seen the giveaways. Oh, uh, bored now. Uh, so, what is next? Next we have armour stuff, which I'm not going to stick on yet, because I don't want to do that yet. Uh, I'm not going to give this guy... This guy's going to be a Zaku, Bogstan Zaku, and he's going to be based on the Knight Errant, who doesn't have anything on his back. So I'm not going to give him a back a, a carapace weapon, I don't think. Let me see what the words in the book say. Knight Errant. <laughs> Uh, Ruby Chainsaw with a Gauntlet, may replace Heavy Stubble with a Melter Gun, may take one of the following carapace... Oh, okay, you can do a carapace weapon. Iron Storm Missile Pod, Twin Icarus Auto Cannon, or a Storm Spear Rocket Pod. Well, I think because it's a Zaku, he's not going to get the best weapon there, is he? We'll give him a Twin Icarus Auto Cannon, I think. Or shall I not? Shall I not? Let's give him a, let's give him an Iron Storm missile pod. That, uh, just for the reasons. I'm making this up. I don't know. I don't want to give him all the same weapons. You see, if I do field them in a game, I want to have like three of them, so it's got a range of weapons. So uh, we want the Iron Storm missile pod. Pod. Iron Storm missile pod. In fact, now I'm going to give him the Twin Icarus auto cannons because. The, the Goof and the Char Zaka will look much better with missile pods on the back. We'll give them the Twin Icarus Auto Cannons. There we go. Oh, it involves lots of parts. That's good. Gives me something to do for an hour. Let's have a quick look. Hey, Fox, give the chance. Would send, would would you eat a penguin? Says Ghost Lyle. I'd eat penguin. I'll eat anything, me. I won't eat puffin. I'll eat penguin. I put an up update on my enormous espresso machine, by the way. Back up in the comments, Fox. I'm not retabbing at all, though, lol. Uh, do go and check out Spid's channel. Spid, his name is his channel, I think. I've got that right. It is. That is right. Tell me if not. Um, yeah, he's bought a massive espresso machine, like proper, like you go in a cafe and they've got it because he likes his coffee and he's, he's rebuilding it. Uh, got to head out, Sir James. It was a real treat as always. Thank you for coming in, James. Good to see you. Right, let's do some shizzle. So what do we need? We need probably a different sprue completely. 
A7, A5, A6. A3, A8. Where A? Where's A come from? A8, A5. Hang on. Have they actually started lettering their sprues? They don't letter their sprues. I tell you, their, their instructions do sometimes confuse me. Ooh. Do, 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 So, A, 7, A, 5. Why are they labelling this as A? Don't quite get that. Somebody explain to me why some things are labelled as A. Uh, also, cannons are not on that one. It's just going to be on, be on this one, I think. Be on this one or the other one completely. We'll find out in a second. I'll keep that other sprue to the side just in case. So, let us continue. Viz is a building. Spid says, hopefully update my video tonight or tomorrow, maybe with sudden darkness and explosions, if my wiring isn't right. Yes. Uh, the, talking about his cough machine, he bought this big massive cough machine and wondered why the power lead had like 13 wires coming out of it. It's because it's designed for industrial three-phase electrics. And he's like, I could just stick a plug on the end. And I'm like, mm, no, you can't. <laughs> no, no. Bit of work required, I think, to get that working. So we shall see what happens. So I need uh, a seven, six, and five. A seven six five A five A five five No nope, A seven five in the middle five I need six 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 let's find random positioning of parts uh 15, 36, 53, 10. You can see what I'm working with here. Uh, so it's going to be... Oh, it says they, they have actually lettered the sprues. I didn't realise that. Oh, they lettered one of the sprues. Okay, well, I let them off. So A, 7, 6. They're still in completely random order. 7 and 6. There we go. So that's 6. Goes on that side. And also we have number five. No, number seven even. You have to make the noise. If you don't make the noise, you're really boring. There we go. Now I'm putting them in that particular layout there because I need to know which is which. So, let's see how much of this we can get done today. Today I have mostly make one gun and a bit of a thing, probably, is what as far as I'll get. Given the fact that I do very little work on these live streams, this might take me about six years to just film, you know, get all these models done for a complete army. But it doesn't matter. We're just hanging out and having good fun times. That's all that matters. Chat doing. Yeah, home finally says Dave. Hey Dave, I'll stick around for a bit just for you, mate. Because there's nothing worse than getting all the way home and me me be going. Hey, I'm going now. Bye. Because that would suck. And I'm going now. Bye. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. So you don't miss much, but you did miss the giveaway. Uh, Zasta says I should have a look round for other YouTube painters. It's relaxing. Yeah, there's loads of loads of us out there. Plenty of people. Not everybody does live streams and stuff. And there are plenty of people out there that do like how to paint things videos, where their presentation is just as annoying as ours. Basically, there are some YouTubers that do like how to paint things videos that I just can't watch. Not because they're bad painters, but because they're just the presentation style is not conducive to me actually learning anything. 
But there are plenty out there who are really, really good painters and also good presenters. People are much better than me. I'm just some schmo that puts paint on stuff and stabs himself on camera for the amusement of the populace at large. Right, so uh, what should we talk about? I don't know. People in chat, start talking about something. Give me a subject to talk about. I don't know. See if you can get me, trigger me so I can do my old man get off my lawn thing again. Can't think of anything to talk about. Uh, not sport, because I don't do sport. Sport bores me. Not politics and religion, obviously. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, Dave. Dave Wise and Barker. I have, I have to I have a confession. I have had occasion to try the Haribo Jelly Babies. And I'm not, I'm not convinced, you know. I'm not convinced they're better than Bassett's. Although, I have to be fair, I did not have Bassett's and Haribo Jelly Babies available to me at the same time. So I may have to do some proper research. They're, they're nice. They're, I, I like them. They're all right. But I don't know. I have to get them side by side and compare the same flavours. Because they seem quite nice, but a little bit more... Maybe a bit, a bit of a stronger flavour. But by the same token, a little bit more chemically, maybe. I don't know. So I will keep you updated. I'll have to acquire some Haribo jellies. Uh, some jelly babies and... Some Bassett's Jelly Babies. And have like a big fest of Jelly Baby eating. And then I can tell you which is best. Which I think is best. I don't doubt you. Uh, Bassett's are nice and squidgy, says Zadster. Fox. Haribo Jelly Babies or Gummy Bears are the originals. Haribo? No, Bassett's, the, Bassett's Jelly Babies have been around for like 70 years or something. Bassett's has been around since 19 something. Who knows forever? Bassett started everything. I tell you what, I used to, one of my friends used to live up Derbyshire Way. She lived near, on the way to her house, you had to drive past the Swizzles Matlow factory. For those that don't know, if you don't know your British snack foods, they make things like sherbet dib dabs and all these, all these different sherbet based sweets. Loads of things like that. Oh, driving past that place smelled fantastic every time. Basically, you just drive down this A road and it's like half an hour of all you can smell is sherbet dib dabs. It was brilliant. Right, so I also need part of A8 and A3. Let's see what the chat's saying. Uh, I should have looked around for the Japanese. Uh, nobody can beat Fox's stream. Oh, well, yeah. If Zach Aureli says hangouts with all the famous Gumpler models, yeah, I do like Zach. Zach stuff. I have a lot of respect for Zach. Um, I hung, hung out in a few of his hangouts when he was doing the building the um, the mega sized. Uh, what do you call it? I can't think and look for things at the same time. Mega sized uh, unicorn. I do like Zach a lot. I just unfortunately I don't get time to hang around in a lot of I mean I'd love to be able to hang out in other people's live streams and stuff and just get to know everybody but I don't have time sadly but Zach's a good bloke he's good people do, 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 do. I mean there are channels that I heartily recommend absolutely heartily recommend you know Zach Aurelius is one Absolutely, give him a subscribe if you like your gumpler. Uh, what's the other part I need now? Uh, hang on, hang on. A3 and A8. That's A8. I hope that's A8. A3. Uh, Dr. Faust Painting Clinic. He's very good if you want to get into your miniature painting and brushes, brush painting and stuff. Lots of useful tips and techniques from him. Plus, he's quite funny. He's, he's a good lad. Um, right, where's A8? It's bound to be one of these I've just looked at. 
Oh, it's A3. There we go. I'm trying to think of what else I recommend. I mean, there are lots of other channels out there, you know, that do gunpla and other Warhammer stuff and painting models and things. Obviously, I recommend all my friends' channels. So, you know, gross models. TK's model making. Skipper Ted. Tony over at Helgen 35. Will from uh, Models by Will. Ant at Bashing Kits. Uh, Adam over at Enigma Model Making. The only person in the world that can decide his channel name based on how little he, how, how, how well he can't pronounce it. Apologies if I've missed anybody out. But there are channels that I, I, I just can't get on with, you know. And it's purely down to if I'm trying to watch somebody's work and they could be the best painter in the world, but if their presentation style or the presentation just doesn't work for me, it just puts me off. Obviously, subscribe to Warhammer TV with Duncan, our Lord and Saviour Duncan, who will teach you all how to paint uh, Warhammers as a beginner. Plus, Warhammer TV's live stream, when it's just like hang out and paint with Duncan and Peachy, can be just hilarious. I kind of like the hangout and play where they play Silver Tower, I raise what it was called. But I do like the hangout and paint with Peachy and Duncan, that's great. Uh, I won't specifically say who not to subscribe or who I don't like, because that's not very professional to do that. But there are channels that I just... I understand why people like them. Maybe they're excellent painters. But there are ones where I'm just like, I can't, I can't watch your content. I'm sorry, because it's just done in such a way that I find annoying or unwatchable. I'm trying to think who else is a really good sub loads let me just go on best way to do it is just to do a, a youtube search go on youtube and just search for whatever kit you're painting if a presenter is worth their salt they'll actually make sure that they've tagged it so that if you're painting like a to me a 135th mark II sherman that their video where they paint a Tamiya 120 35th mark II sherman will come up if they're the kind of person that just puts tank painting part three and don't put tags in then don't bother watching them because they won't have tagged it they won't have done playlists that bugs the crap out of me that people that don't do playlists it's like oh number of times i've been on somebody's channel it's like right i've watched part one of this build and it's really really good and now i want to watch part two but it doesn't come up in the in the sort of what's next bar how the hell do i find it oh you want me to go through hundreds of videos on your channel and find it uh, goodbye so if you're doing youtube for the love of god do playlists Um, Tabletop Minions is a really good I do like Uncle Atom his presentation does fantastic he's very funny he's more about the actual gaming side of the of uh, Warhammer and tabletop gaming though he does cover the making side he has a lots of good useful information but he's not like a hands on here's me doing it kind of thing he does do that but not as much a lot of times it's just like a piece to camera where he's advising and explaining so he does say a lot of worth stuff worth listening to but he's just really quite funny yeah, tabletop minions is good. That's his title music. And when he goes, pachow. Uh, other channels you should subscribe to. I don't mind prom promoting other channels. One of the channels. Cha words. Other channels you should subscribe to, even though they may not be model making related. For the love of dog, go and subscribe to glove and boots if you don't watch glove and boots already you need to go and watch glove and boots you need to watch every one of their videos now i think they've actually kind of died to death because they're having some problems and i think sadly it may have actually sort of fallen on its ass but just for the love of god go and watch glove and boots watch every single one of their videos you will come to love mario and fafa uh dave says i take it i still have to scribble on scrap paper eight still eight well maybe next week lol maybe uh, do, 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 do. Scale Modeling Channel is a great channel for car paint. It's a really good professional finish on his kits. All right. Have you tried writing music lately? And if you have, what software have you enjoyed? Uh, says Brian Costello. I haven't written music in about... I don't know. 15 years. I haven't written anything in about 10 to 15 years. Uh, I sold all my music equipment to get my model making set up. Uh, 
But it had been sitting around idle for like five years. Coffee. Oh, this is Big Swig. Sorry, this isn't Slurpee, this. I had a whole rack of... Um, a whole collection of like synthesizers. Uh, I had an old an old Tascam 388 reel-to-reel 8 track, which I didn't actually use after a while as the reel-to-reel 8 track, like a proper with a mixing desk on it. I just used it for the mixing desk that was built into it. Uh, I had a hard drive 8 track recorder, which I got in the late 90s, which at the time was cutting edge. That was good. And loads of other equipment, DAP machine and loads of other effects equipment. And I had a AKS 2000 sampling rack unit. I had... Uh, what to have? I had a Korg Poly 6 synthesizer. Uh, I had a Roland W30 DX21. I had a Moog the Rogue, which is brilliant. Uh, I had, what else did I have? Yamaha uh, something. I can't remember what, I can't remember what they were now. 15 years. But I used to use those, but there was it came to a point where I hadn't really recorded anything in years. And years and all this equipment was sitting there and it was you know many many thousands of pounds worth of kit that I'd built up over the years because I started kind of doing electronic music when I was maybe 15 16 my dad bought me a, a little synth in fact no the first one I ever had was a, it was a Roland W30 sampling keyboard synthesizer thing this doesn't fit am I doing this wrong I don't trust this, it's not going on right. There's a space. Um, yeah, and I t took it from there, to be honest. Don't understand how that goes on. I'm not seeing this in a logical way. <sighs> So, uh, yeah, so it, it, I'm going to wait. I'm going to sand that down in a bit. It's not sticking together properly, that at all. I don't quite understand why there's a little step there. I've got the right piece, haven't I? A3, yeah, A3. Oh, sort it again in a minute. Um, and I wanted to get back into model making, but I needed the space, and all the equipment was where this workbench is. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sell my musical kit because I haven't used it in years. I'm unlikely to use it again. And one of the problems was that when I first started out, I was heavily influenced by the likes of Jean-Michel Jean, Van Gelis, uh, Kraftwerk. And I was heavily into my, what I kind of called symphonic electronica, like Van Gelis kind of stuff. That's what I did. But after a while, I got more into, I started listening to orchestral soundtracks, like full orchestra movie soundtracks. <laughs> And it knackered me because from that point I forgot how to electronic and I was really trying to emulate a real orchestra and real instruments and it just got worse and worse because at that time you couldn't really do it very well without spending thousands and thousands of pounds. So it all kind of faded away and I lost the I lost the urge to compose. <coughs> uh, and then eventually I just thought, you know what, I'm not using this stuff. It's never going to get used again. Let's just sell it and I can set up my model making. So I did. It was all gone, unfortunately. Some poor buggers came all the way from Scotland to buy my Tascam 388. <laughs> Heft it all the way back again. It just about fit in their Volvo estate. Somehow. Uh, now you don't need to glue this apparently. Apparently. I suspect you do. A little bit. Oh I see, you don't need to glue that bit, but you need to glue in here. Okay, I've got you. So yeah, so no, there's, uh, I mean, I could, I could go down the route now of like software synthesizers, where you do it all on your computer, but before my computer exploded, I had to get it rebuilt, it actually had sound card and stuff set up for that purpose, but I never really, I never really did anything with it, so when I had to get my PC rebuilt, I just said to them, said to my friend who made it for me, don't bother with all the funky sound stuff, I don't need it. I need to be built for doing videos. 
So yeah, that that part of it was long gone. Sadly, I say mostly it was just the ideas dried up. I really kind of they just really kind of faded away. Sadly, and that was because I was listening to full orchestra stuff, which shot myself in the foot. Because I'd listen to like Jar Vangelis and he'd be like, I know exactly how I can recreate that particular. That's the wrong way around. It's not the wrong way around. Is it the wrong way around? Bleh. No, it's the right way around. Uh, I might be. T I might think to myself, I know exactly how to recreate that sound. Or that particular whatever they'd have done. And I started off by copying. That's how I taught myself to program synthesizers and how to create different sounds. Um, but like I say, it just, it just faded away. The creative bent that I had for that, the sort of the, the composing thing. There was a while where I could compose anything and I was really daring and I'd just do whatever came into my mind. And then with so many things, like with my drawing as well, it got to the point where I was kind of second guessing myself and thinking, oh, do I want to do that? Do I want to do this? And in the end, I just gave up. Once I start losing the the childlike creativity, I know to move on and do something else. Which is what I did. Where, where are we up to? Okay, now we've got to go on the big guns. Big guns. Uh, so have a quick look at how long we've been going for. Uh, two and a quarter hours. Okay. Let's have a quick look at the chat. Take a little breaky break while that sets blue sets. Smoke a break for me and chat break. Where are we up to in chat? Uh, what age penguin? Yes. Uh, stream says Fox. Have you caught on to Bill Divers? Yeah, I'm actually really enjoying it. I've not watched the latest episode, but I think I'm up to about episode seven. I quite like it. If if for no other reason they've got animal characters because it's all avatars. It's great. Still not Gunpla. Still not Gundam Bill Fighters try. Uh, yeah, Gundam Bill Fighters try. No, which was the. Which was the first one with Saiyan Iori? Was that Gundam Bill Fighters or Gundam Bill Fighters Try? I think it was Bill Fighters, wasn't it? First one was still the best. Uh, how is the weather in England at the moment? Warm and sunny. And hopefully for a while it will be. Figure painting is a black ox, says Spig. Spid. Uh, stabbing yourself is a public service health and service announcement. Yes. I do it so you don't have to and also so you can laugh at me doing it. Nate Bliss says Bassett's Jelly Babies are the best. Uh, Zasta says the weather's been crap but now it's sunny and 17 degrees C uh, wow the chat just jumps and I lose my place straight away Ugh. right I really have lost just kind of like big it just kind of goes bam here's 400 extra comments and I'm like great but where was I uh, Fox Harry about Jelly Babies oh no you've done that one uh, Tangy Bassett suffer wimps Oh yeah, Dave says the the uh, Haribo one's a little bit tangy. Yeah, they are. They've got a bit of a stronger flavour. Bassett's original and best, says Nate Bliss. Doctor Who approved, of course, because Doctor Who used to eat jelly babies. Do, do, do. Uh, Fox, not far where I go on holiday in France. There's a Haribo factory that you can visit and buy sweets, says Rody Hobby. I'm not a big sweets man. I'm not a big Haribo man at all. I'll be honest, I don't really like chewy. So I, I like chocolate. Why does everyone think Werther's Originals have been around for centuries? Do they fall, fall for the advertising, says Tony Blackwell. Yes. Uh, Tom Baker was not Doctor Who. He was an imposter, says Dave Weisrum and Barker. Dave Weisrum and Barker is now banned. Because to Tom Baker was just... Of all the old Doctor Who's, he was by far the best. <sighs> Followed closely by Pertwee. Do, do, most likely the uh, Haribo UK down the road from me in Pontefract, huge warehouse, also factory shop. Gummy bears are not remotely like jelly babies, says Night Bless. They're not. Uh, was it Dr. Faust who did the Tommy build his first model kit video, Fox? That was hilarious. Yes, that was. That was a brilliant video. And I, I've spent many years trying to think of how I could rip that off and I can't in good conscience do it. Because it was like, you know, Tommy builds his first video. That was great. That was Dr. Faust, painting clinic. Tony made me buy Bandai's Y Wing. Uh, wait, stream which Tony? Do you mean Tony in here or Tony Dr. Faust? What's his name? Uh, jelly Babies are a gummy candy based on gelatin. Jelly Babies just taste different but are essentially the same candy, mate. No, they're not. Jelly Babies aren't. 
they're not quite as chewy and and, and rubbery as, <clears throat> as as like other things. They're just you can't explain them. I hate any that swear profusely or excessively when it's unnecessary. Says Spid. Yeah, I agree. Um, there's this, uh, I mean, I could I could quite happily sit and swear on my videos. But a, I'm aiming them at everybody, not just adults. B, I want them to be monetized. Thank you very much. And uh, C, I, I don't feel the need to. I might you know, say shit occasionally or you know whatever, but very occasionally, and that's kind of tame. And I might swear a bit in these live streams because. We're all adults here, but at the same time, you know, we used to do the Treehouse podcast and stuff, and they were swearing, but that's because that was for grown-ups who paid Patreon money, so. Uh, no, 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 no. Jelly beans are closer to gummy bears than jelly babies. Your jelly beans are kind of crunchy-ish. I've started the whole thing about jelly beans and jelly babies now. Fox, are those all ultimate sanding sticks, says Otto. Uh, that one is. And that one is. And that one is. Uh, and that one is... There is another one I've got, I'm not using it at the minute, which is a flory one. I've got the blue flory buffing and polishing stick, which is actually better than the UMP one. But these are great, I love these. I've got like a million of them, so. Burp. Oh, excuse me, burpage. I do apologise. Burping on telly. Uh, Paul D. Uh, Spid says, hang on. Uh, and it's not because you don't like it. Uh, that's why I create playlists for series, Bill says Spid. Yeah, if you are doing YouTube videos for the love of dog, Please, if you've got a series of videos about one thing, put them in a playlist and make all the things have playlists. Really is nothing that puts me off ever coming back to somebody's channel when they've got 35 episodes of a, of a series of something and there's no playlist. So I have to go hunting in their video. Like, hang on, this was two years ago. I've got to go 300 videos to find part two and part three. Just, no, don't make people have to do that. I hate YouTubers that show builds with no commentary, just crappy music, says Paul Di Tommaso. Uh, Tony Blackwell says true Paul but some people have boring voices I must admit I don't know I mean it's personal preference I don't personally have anything I don't gain anything from video where it's here's my build <coughs> and it's a series of photographs and music two reasons for me personally two generally it's music I don't like and you <coughs> excuse me your tickly throat uh, your choice of music may alienate a lot of people watching because if you put thumping dance rave tunes on there, then anybody who doesn't like thumping dance rave tunes is going to leave straight away and not watch it. Uh, and two, you, I don't feel you learn as much. But it's important to remember that not everybody can do a video. Some people don't have the, the kit to do a video. So there's nothing inherently wrong with like montage videos like that. It's just if you do do one, just do talking. Talk over the top. And have some quiet music in the background. Don't just put your favourite dance rave metal, heavy metal, death metal tune up top. Because anybody who doesn't like that kind of music will instantly close that tab down. and will never come back to your channel. Jerry quite likes Andy Hobby's headquarters. Uh, Andy's channel is good. Hey Tony, I'm right here, says Chris at Grace Models. Uh, Plasma is pretty good, especially if you like your Edward aftermarket bits. Fox, have you caught it? I've done that one. Uh, good Mythical Morning is greatness. Plasma is a very talented man. Yogg's Labs just used to be genius when I still played modded Minecraft. Wasn't there a whole scandal with Yogg? And something, I remember some, some kind of whole monkey shit fight went down when there was something to do with Yogg and funding or something. It all went to pot, basically. Do-do-do-do. Uh, do, do. Vincent says, Tony, I've literally started properly model making after watching Fox's videos. I only wanted to learn how to panel like Gumpel and I'm surrounded by airbrush supplies and 30 kit stash. You're welcome. My work here is done. Hi, Fox. How are you getting on with the Pig of Doom? Uh, Pig of Doom? What's the Pig of Doom? Is that the... the oh, you mean the... Uh, the Ghost chili pork scratch, they've all gone. They've gone, mate. They've eaten, gone. <laughs> they've long eaten. They were they were kind of best for, like, go downstairs and just pick a few out and eat them. Like, once or twice a day as I'm going downstairs for some other reason. Oh, I love some of them. They didn't last long. Well, they lasted quite a while. Tony Blackwell, Vangelis sounds so dated now, but he doesn't. Not the early stuff. Like, go and listen to, like, anything that's on the Themes compilation album. Like, you know, if you listen to Heaven and Hell, yeah, that's terrible. Uh, if you listen to some of the early albums, Albedo 0.39, they are terrible. But if you go and listen to, say, Themes, the, the compilation album Themes, everything on there is fantastic. And I think when he got away from his original early keyboards, like his CS90 and things like that, and he got into the more modern keyboards, 
and he got to like the point of doing things like The City and stuff, and 1492 soundtrack, which was tedious. Then he got really boring. Some of that early stuff, when he used like the CS90s and the Mellotrons and stuff, they were great. Right, what are we doing? Uh, do, do, do. Vangelis is of its time. Sounds great, though. I was listening to Pulsar the other day. Yeah. I mean, just go and watch the opening credits for Carl Sagan's Cosmos. Tell me that's not fantastic music. It's some of his... A lot of... If you listen to Heaven and Hell, it is a terrible album because it's got one or two good tunes on it and then most of it's just dross. <sighs> I want... Scott Sullivan says, I want to lie, shipwrecked and comatose, eating fresh mango juice, goldfish shawls nibbling at my toes. Yeah, that's very good. <laughs> you may be singing everything. Puffin shawls nibbling at my fingers, says uh, Nate Bliss. It's in my head now. Uh, you used to know a Portuguese guy who asked his English teacher what snibbling means as he misheard the Red Dwarf theme. <laughs> what is this snibbling? Uh, Rat Pack says, Gunner Build Fighters, Gunner Build Fighters Try, Fumina, Gunner Build Divers, then GBF and GBFT have each their movies. Yeah, Gunner Build Fighters I think was the first one with Sei and Iori, wasn't it? Because I I love um, the character of one of them. I, I, uh, not you know, Sei, it was Sei and. What was his name? Sei Iori was the main protagonist, and the, the comedy sidekick was the guy from the alternative, whatever, was uh, Reiki, I think. Reiki? I think. I liked him anyway, because he ate food all the time. Oh, I don't know. Zadsta says, Phil Flurry does some good vids. He likes the sound of his own voice, though. Bless him. I, that's me. I do that. I never shut up. Uh, hi, he says, Roberto Austria. With the miniatures, is it more difficult to paint? You cannot paint parts and then unite them as we do with the Bandai models. Um, it depends on the kit. A lot of the... Uh, the thing to bear in mind is that these kind of Warhammer things are designed are designed for brush painting to make them brush painting friendly but you can paint them either way um, but you just for a lot of them you just build them in sub assemblies they are very very simple builds and they're very pleasing and quite chunky so it doesn't really matter it's no different to building any other model kit it's not like Bandai where you can snap it all together at the end although some of them you can you can do things like you know you can put magnets in and stuff like that um, but no it's just they're just like normal model kits the same way if you're building a tank or a uh, a truck or a you know, 135th tank with a crew or something. It'd be exactly the same as that. You'd have little sub-assemblies you'd do. So, no, not more difficult. But they are much more tailored towards brush painting. That's why they have the sort of beautifully crisp uh, details and nice crisp edges. And a lot of the edges are kind of exaggerated, like the panel lines are kind of a bit more exaggerated. They're not realistic. And it's purely because the majority of people will paint this with brush. And they really do lend themselves to brush painting. Uh, do, 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 do. Sorry, sniffly nose. Will Patterson's videos are good. He has a compelling voice. I do like Will Patterson. Uh, Tony Blackwell says that. Yeah, Will Patterson's great. I do like Will a lot. I have a lot of respect for Will. Uh, if you've never watched his stuff, he, he overcomes severe physical challenges. And his model making is a therapy and a kind of uh, self-imposed therapy um, for the he had, a, he had a motorbike accident and his, his model making is like a self-imposed regime and regimen of, of, of uh, activity to, to get back into being able to move around and use his arms and hands and stuff so yeah I have a lot of respect for him he's a fantastic model maker and he's a, just a stunning example of overcoming adversity so yeah a lot of respect for Will Yogg's cast promoted the Kickstarter for a Yogg branded game big time which then imploded Q lots of teenagers who didn't understand what Kickstarter was yeah that was it that was it uh, Ragey that's it yeah Ragey I like Ragey because he's like me he's an idiot and he always wants to do his eat oh he used to go oh a lot <laughs> Ragey oh oi 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 so I love I love it in the in the in the Gundam anime when they go oi oi like as if to say like wait hey what what but it just sounds like somebody from London going oi oi mate you alright there's no way to do it without without not sounding Japanese and just sounding like you're in London or somewhere. But Rage is great because he's kind of an idiot and all he wants to do is play Gundam and eat. I mean play Gundam battle and eat. It's great. I love that character. <laughs> What is next? We shall do the gun parts.
Gentlemen, prepare your gun parts. What other channels are worth watch subscribing to? What do I subscribe to on the YouTubes? Let's have a think. Millions of channels, but I'll try and give you some examples. Good things to watch. So yeah, go and subscribe to Glove and Boots. Glove and Boots is kick ass. I need A1, A2, and A9. Glove and Boots is hilarious. A1, A2, and A9. There's A9. Who else do I subscribe to? Uh, let's have a think. I've subscribed to so many, I've actually forgotten most of the ones I subscribe to. Uh, Electro Boom is a fantastic channel. Uh, a guy called Merdy. He's, uh, he's an electrical engineer. And he's actually kind of educational. He teaches you a lot about like electricity and uh, things. But he started off doing like videos where he was trying to make a thing and would regularly like give himself electric shocks or blow himself up and he's just hilarious he's really really good electro boom a2 i need jet is a2 so a2 is nowhere near a4 so it could be anywhere it is in a place where is the place that it is in it is in there. So yeah, Electro Boom, that's good. Who else do I subscribe to? Uh, I think I can't think of anything. I've got like a million people channels that I subscribe to, and I just can't remember any of them. Fantastic. Uh, for your Gundam stuff, I quite like uh, Mecha Guy Kotsu. The Irish chap who lived in Japan and has now moved somewhere, I think, but I don't know where. He's quite good. It's mostly reviews he does. Uh, Kakarot. I can't remember the number. It's like it's one of these things where they've got the name and the number of that. Kakarot 187, I think, or something like that. And I have to say, I, I don't get this Dragon Ball Z thing. So many people are into Dragon Ball Z, I can't watch it. Because I just look at the artwork and say, that's the worst artwork I've ever seen. The faces make me angry. I mean, physically angry. With their stupid eyes. and it's, it's, I can't watch Dragon Ball Z. But, uh, Kakarot187, I think his name is. Uh, and one of my favourite Gumpler channels, which sadly doesn't do anything anymore. hasn't done for years. was Robert187, no, it was Robert187, Robert which is two R's, two B's, I think. Uh, he hasn't done anything in years. He just seems to use like a review. He building review, and a, he had a quite a compelling and interesting way of speaking. But he's just not. He just dropped off the radar. I think. I think he went to work at Hobby Link Japan. But his videos were great. A lot of my early, when I was getting into Gunpla, I learned my early decisions as to what to build were based on his reviews. Uh, who else? Who else? There are channels that I don't like, but I'm not going to name them because I'm not going to sit here and badmouth other YouTubers. Um, I think now. Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. All the ones I subscribe to, all of them. Oh, sniffly nose, I do apologise. It's not a case of blowing my nose, because it's not like my nose is... I've not got cold or anything, it's just literally because the lights are on and the camera's on, I suddenly get sniffles. And we'll get this little gun bit built, and then we'll call it a day today, I think. I'm not going to... I've cut the knob off there, but I'm not going to sand it until I've glued it onto the gun. So it won't get sanded straight away, that one. Who else? Who else? You guys have got any good YouTube subscription tips? Put them in the chat. It's always worth a shout. It doesn't have to be a model making. It could be anything. Uh, who else will subscribe to? If you play Elite Dangerous, uh, then Yamix. I can't remember exactly what the channel. It might just be called Yamix or Commissar Yamix or something. I can't remember now. It's Yamix is quite a good and funny channel for Elite Dangerous. It's quite a good presentation style. Uh, 
There's a few that I could recommend that I can't remember the names of. I'm trying to just imagine in my head now my subscriptions feed and what kind of videos are on there. I can't remember any of them. Because I'm special. Uh, currently building the MD Epion and as Jabman said it's loaded with bad nubs. That was the last video of his I watched. Uh, yeah, Jabman's okay. I've not watched one of his things for a while. Uh, Big Clive is hilarious. The one where he stripped a rechargeable battery and caught fire. <laughs> Say that again in English. Uh, he stripped a char rechargeable battery which caught fire on his bed. I think I've seen some of Big Clive stuff. Uh, do, do, do. Love Only One Day builds by test, especially painting builds. Great content. Yep. Days Worlds of Stuff. Fun stuff. Guitar stuff. Punish props. Colin Furs. That Team Inep channel is good, says Chris, and a shameless plug for his own channel. Thank you. Uh, Ave is funny, reviews tools and other stuff. His commentary is more adult oriented. Uh, I don't recall the channel name, but I watched a great one about Thallium with a Russian, I think, scientist. The accent made it cooler, like an Iron Man baddie. There is one. Um, there is one Warhammer channel called By Painted, I think. Is it By Painted? Where he shows how to bake and make and paint things. And he basically builds them and sells them. He's doing it for that. But he's got quite a relaxing sort of Russian accent. Yamix is quite funny because he's, he's got like a Latvian accent. And for some reason it just makes it, it makes it more compelling to listen to what he says and makes him funnier. Uh, I can't think of anybody else. There's probably some really good channels that I subscribed to over the years that I've forgotten all about because I haven't watched anything. I do miss Robert though. I want uh, one or two Bs or whatever it was. Robert one eight. I don't know. They've all got numbers after the name. This whole thing of having like a name where you have to put a number after it because we're three hundred others. If you want to come up with a YouTube name and it says you can't have that, but you can have that with a load of numbers at the end of it. That's the way of the universe saying you need to have a different name because there's other people with that name. <laughs> yeah. Although a lot of people, some of the older channels, they'll be from days when they had like say AOL or. Yahoo Mail and stuff and that's what they used then and it kind of stuck and they've used it ever since but nowadays if you set up a YouTube channel and your name isn't available don't use one where it's the same name with a number after it like you know I want to be called Ultimate Cactus but there's already 330 people called that so I'll be Ultimate Cactus 332 that's great apart from everybody who's got that who wants to find your channel will come across all the other channels as well and they'll be like I don't know which one it is so think logically Gluing the thing on the end because I'm because I have to. The book tells me to, and I always do what the book tells me to do because of the reasons. So, this has got a little seam down the middle of this barrel here, the muzzle. So, I'm just going to put some glue in there. Again, I've, I've taken the knob off a little bit, but I've not sanded it, like I said earlier, because I'm going to fill that little gap with the glue. Squishy, 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 squish, squish, and then once that glue is fully dried, I can sand it back and it'll take care of the nub as well. And I've said before, for most, se especially on Gumpler, for most seams, you can actually just use the to make extra thin, put it in, squish it, and it's absolutely fine. If you did find there was still little pits and dings. Or maybe where it didn't squish out and you've still got a little bit of a gap. That's where you can go in with the thicker glue and just fill it in. Or you can make yourself some sprue goo for really big gaps. The dings and things. Which is just this. With a load of pla plate or plastic card. Cut up into tiny pieces and dumped in it. So it makes this really thick, basically liquid plastic. The best stuff. You don't have to spend money on fillers when you can use sprue goo. For French Gumpler, we have Hobby Forever, Hobby Ninja, or Steel Giants, says Stroom. Uh, Paranoid Times has some great stories, says the Earl Day. Uh, just for a chill voice, there's a guy called the Craftsman. A Craftsman, no tea, and doesn't matter what craft thing he does, he's got a voice like oozing honey that's chocolate coated. Uh, oh, there's one. Um, there's one channel. It's a New. It's a New Zealand guy. And it's called something dad something. It's how to dad. I think it's called how to dad. He's hilarious. If you've never watched any of his stuff, go and watch some of his stuff. He is hilarious. How to dad. He's like, g'day. Going to show you how to calm a child down. 
or whatever it is, you know, I can't do the accent. But no, he's really good. How to Dad, I think it's called. Okay, this needs to go on there. Somehow, that needs to go on somehow, like maybe that, maybe. How does this go on? I don't know. Oh, probably the right way around will be the way it goes on. There we go. Little ammo canister. What? How is this going on now? I don't understand what this is doing. What What are you doing? This? It's not the right way around. That is the right way around. But that's not what... Uh, what? I'm, I'm having a special moment. A two A one A nine. I built that one. So I've built that one, but it's the other one. A mm, one, but it's that way around. A four. Have I just done a four by mistake? Oh, I done the wrong one. Never mind. They're both the same, but the other ones. Oh, I did the wrong one. Never mind. Right. So the ammo canister goes on there like that. There we go. Stupid boy. Uh, yeah, so uh, how to dad. I think it's how to dad. He's a Kiwi. It's really funny. Go and watch his stuff. Uh, now, there was a question in the chat a second ago. If you give me a moment, I'll get to it. Uh, Roberto Austria says, Please keep me when to use the most delicate nippers like the ones you have there, and when to use the most robust nippers to cut plastic. Um, any nippers will do. But the only reason I'm being careful with these, because... These are the god hand ones that are very expensive that were sent to me by Stein van Gemert. And I can't afford to replace them. Uh, and with these, if you use the very tips and the very ends, they're likely to snap. They're very easily breakable. So the reason I keep switching uh, is because on these Warhammer kits, some of the nubs are either really, really thick or they're kind of high up and I can't get these little tiny clippers up far enough. I can do there, but like some of them I can't get the nip. Let's find an example. I can't find one now. Some of them I can't get the, the blades high enough up, so I'm not using the tips of them. So when I can't use those, I'll just go in with these because these are longer. It doesn't really matter. I would just say if, you, if you've got a kit with lots of really tiny, delicate parts, little hoses and tubes and exhaust pipes, maybe you want to use something more delicate like these. These are, um, these are designed to cut with as little nub left as possible. Whereas, say, your Citadel ones or your Tamiya ones... They're still pretty good, but they're going to leave a more sizable nub, and they, they're my heavy duty, so they pull the plastic more. These tend to not to push the plastic, so these are quite good. If you've got little fine, delicate things like pipes and tubes, something like these might be a bit better. If you can afford them, I'll get them. Because I say, these are about 40 quid, and it's more expensive to get these shipped to me than it is to actually pay for them. So it's basically double the price, so that's why I was very grateful when Stein sent me these. Because I've always wanted some, but they're just too expensive for me to buy. Uh, but it depends. You, you can use any clippers you want, just if it's a really thick, chunky, like, tat nub, probably something delicate like that is not going to be as easy, as much use as something heavier like the, the Citadel ones or your Tamiya nippers. These are more for delicate gumpler parts, really. Right, so that's that one gun done. One gun done. Sounds like a Chinese dish. Now, I'll get the other one done, and I'll probably call it quits for today. Now I know what I'm doing. Uh, Mm -mm -mm. Funny one, I have a, uh, this is Spid, he says, I have a time lapse of a Lotus 7 done as the Prisoner Car, do you remember the Prisoner, the TV series with Patrick McGowan, a car 120C, which was the registration, and a few years ago, some guy on COD, Call of Duty, called himself car 120C, so I had loads of comments like, what the heck, dude, this isn't Call of Duty. Mm -mm -mm. I tend to do podcasts more than YouTube, says, uh, says Tony. I have um, I have podcasts playing in the background when I'm doing tedious stuff like nubs and things. Uh, I used to listen to all the... My podcast of choice are the Giant Bomb podcast and all its offshoots, like the Beast cast. Uh, I used to religiously listen to the Tested podcast. This is only a test. And I used to religiously listen to Major Nelson Radio, which is the... The sort of the, the PR guy from Microsoft for Xbox. Uh, I don't listen to those two anymore because the Tested Podcast was brilliant. And it's still good, but I think it's missing a lot since Gary Witter and Will uh, left, basically. 
Will was the co-host. He's gone on to do his own VR thing now, and he he was he was great. And Gary Witter, who is a now is a screenwriter, did things like some of the Star Wars movies. Uh, he used to sort of guest host on that all the time. And when they left, it kind of wasn't the same. It wasn't quite as funny. Um, Major Nelson Radio, I used to listen to all the time. Uh, and that was quite good until uh, Steptoe left. Steptoe, who was the head of Microsoft Xbox Live Security Enforcement. He left Microsoft and sadly passed away last year, actually, believe it or not. Um, he left, so he wasn't on the podcast anymore. And again, he was, you know, E and Major Nelson are quite funny, but I don't know, it lost something when Steptoe left. So again, I stopped listening to that eventually. Giant Bombcast, I still listen to. And you don't have to be into games. It's just funny. Uh, that's about it for podcasts. Kenneth from Australia did put me on to a couple of Australian podcasts, which sounded great, but they were kind of behind a paywall. So I was like, yeah, you know, I don't want to do that. Do it on camera, dear. Uh, let's have a look at the YouTube channels. What else is awesome on YouTube? There's loads on YouTube. If it's model making advice you're after, I say just, just do a search for the thing you're building and need help with and then take it from there. You'll come across, depending on your subject, especially with things like Gumplet and Warhammer, you'll come across the same names cropping up over and over. Because, you no, know, there's only so many channels that do Gumplet and only so many channels that do Warhammer in a good enough way to help you. There's lots of channels that do things on both. You know, there's tons of channels that do Gumplet. But, to be honest, most of them are kind of trash. There's only a small number on each kind of subject where they'll actually teach you stuff and be actually you know worth watching a lot of gumpler stuff is review people reviewing kits but there are those who actually do the build and paint as well and go into depth on that you just really you know look up your particular genre favorite genre and uh, weed out the ones that are just photo montages and don't really teach you anything and the ones that have got annoying presenters that you can't stand the sound of or look of and uh, go from there do 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 <laughs> let's have a look uh, prisoner is a great classic says otto spid says amazing series same about the remake yep port marion is a fascinating place too it is Kind of visionary, we are all numbers now, says Stroom. Do, 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 do. Will Smith, that's it. I couldn't remember his surname. Will Smith, Will from Tested. I should remember it because it's Will Smith. Um, yeah, well, yeah. One, when Will left and Gary left, it was like, it's, it's still good. It's just, it's more. It was always tech focused, but with Will and Gary, there was kind of just shenanigans as well. But now it's just Norman. I've not really listened to it for a while, so it's just Norman and a few others. There's not so much shenanigans going on. It's more kind of tech and geek stuff. It's just like, it's alright. It just doesn't doesn't float my boat anymore. I did download one the other day where they had a, a, a guest appearance by Gary. And I was like, yes! Back to the old way. But sadly, it was only a, a guest appearance. Because he's too busy nowadays writing Star Wars movies and things. And books and comic books. Which is good. Paul's off. Who's Paul? Uh, Paul says... Take care, people. Hopefully I can catch the E-Models live cast tomorrow. See you, Fox. Thanks for coming in, Paul. Much appreciated. We'll be, we'll be knocking it on the head shortly anyway. But thank you for coming in. Come again. Do try the fish. Do you know seam lines on that? Not that I can see. At the end of the day, everybody, everybody's YouTube tastes vary anyway. One thing I can't stand is all the kind of vloggers. Where it's just, you know, like the... Casey what's it and the PewDiePie's and stuff where it's just like there's no real where's my file gone I don't find anything of value then for me because they're just people talking rubbish basically and gaining celebrity status for being for the most part idiots 
I'm like, yeah, I don't, maybe the young kids nowadays get like this, but it's nothing, I can't stand any of it. And whenever you get articles about this YouTuber and that YouTuber had this big rivalry, and I'm like, I don't know who any of these people are, nor do I care. I mean, I, mean, I suppose PewDiePie is angled on gaming, so there's a, there's a, there's a you know, there's a subject. But people who are just vloggers and they just vlog about any old crap, I really don't understand their benefit to society. No see many value to it they just do things to cause like that idiot that went to the I don't know the names that moron that went to the Japanese suicide forest and then showed it somebody who killed themselves what an absolute spoon I will slag some people off on this video and you know vloggers well they're, they're fair game because most of them are spoons anyway but I am old I mean you bear that in mind I am old and grumpy Right, nearly done, folks. Uh, my kids drive me nuts with PewDiePie and Jack I, 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 I know who Jack Septicai is, but I don't actually watch his stuff, and I have no interest in it. PewDiePie, I, I don't know. Kind of people that have this massive reach to a lot of people would then kind of use it irresponsibly. I just can't be doing with that. But I can see how people would like it. You know, I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying they are terrible. I'm just saying they're not my kind of thing. I have I gain nothing from them. I have no understanding of why they are so popular. I'd like you know to have 16 million viewers and make seven million dollars a year. That'd be brilliant. So come on, folks, get all your friends to subscribe to my channel. I want me I want me platinum and diamond YouTube buttons. It's never gonna happen. I'm never even gonna get a silver button. Was it hundred thousand subscribers for a silver button? That's never gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, Rat Pack 30 says, Oh, so full, no more curry for you guys. Na 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 na. Uh, PewDiePie got disgraced in you because of some racist crap, says says Vincent. He, he does it regularly, as do all those kind of types. They say something so incredibly dumb that the internet shit kittens they pull a sorry not sorry and then they're back to it anyway because oh, really knows what tends to happen is that the people that are offended by it are not their target audience like the people that get offended by it are mature adults that can actually think whereas the you know teenagers that follow them are like they don't care and they don't know gosh I'm like such an old man grumpy old bastard that's me get off my lawn right that's that glued together oh glued together Gwenel Dupre says I just spilled half my Microsoft bottle on my table oh there's nothing worse here's a handy tip for you here is a very handy tip either make something out of um, plastic card that can hold it in place or do what I do get an old placemat cup coaster bit of blue tap Won't knock it over again and you can replace that with glue you can use it for your glue you can use it for your whatever you want yeah, that's what i do i can't spill it then there's nothing worse than spilling half a bottle of microsol or microset it's just soul crushing and it makes you want to go away and cry i know that feeling all too well and it's exactly the same with the uh, shades citadel shades because these things fall over that easy so if you're using a shade get that on there and then you can yeah but you know we learn by doing as cook as uh, Spock said to cook right so that's those two on there I think what I shall do now is before I start attaching these to the, the base part I think I'll leave that as it is and I think we'll leave it there let's just have a quick last look at the chat in a moment uh, I'll just see how long we've been going for two hours 55 that's about the right length for one of my live streams. As usual, I've got bugger all done. Well, I've got a little bit done. Got a little bit done. Uh, let's have a look. West Philadelphia, born and raised on a playground, is where I spent most of my days because Brian Costello said Will Smith. Will Smith often alludes to the fact that he has the Twitter account, Will Smith. Uh, and often people send him questions saying, Do you ever get asked by the actual Will Smith? To, and he's like, No. Would you sell it to him? No. 
the people, a lot of people follow Will Smith because they think he's the actor Will Smith and he's not, he's the, the bloke from Tested. Uh, Paul, uh, let's have a look. Do, 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 do. I've made the other day, uh, stream says, by the way, I've made the other day my first barbecue of the year, good old McGray with potatoes baked in cinder. <gasps> yeah. You're a mere strip of a lad fox, says Tony Blackwell. Get off my lawn. Uh, I just tend to listen to the Disc World books instead of podcasts, says Jerry. Uh, people who use clickbaity thumbnails that are almost convincing enough hate them. The ones that are laughable are okay. Scroll by. I hate the uh, sort of the top ten kind of videos. Top ten this and that, and it's just they always have a clickbaity photograph. I just don't even watch those because more of that I have watched a handful, and they've always got factual errors in them. Uh, do do do. And of course, on my decal says Grinnell when she spilled a microsol. <gasps> the actual sheet of decals. I. Just leave it to dry by itself. It might be all right. You may have to end up getting new decals, but you might be all right. Uh, Tamia Rattletad's... Tamia Rattlecan at lids at work like a charm, says Nate, is a thing to put you... Yeah, put it inside the lid. That's another idea. Do, do, do. Spilling a bottle of Ravel airbrush cleaner, the green stuff is pretty terrible. Or you could do like TK, you could have your um, airbrush cleaner and your water in identical bottles and then by accident put a load of airbrush cleaner all over your model when you're trying to brush water on for your decals. Yeah, that could, that's, that's always good. Check out Tony, uh, Tony Blackwell says, check out Tony Hawk's on the Comedian website. He has a section of messages from kids who think he's Tony Hawk the skateboarder. Spid says, right, got to roast my last batch of coffee for the week, then off to possibly blow myself up with my dodgy espresso machine wiring. Good fun show again, Mr. Fox. We'll catch you and skip a TED tomorrow. Thanks for coming in, Spid. Please don't blow yourself up. But if you do, make sure you film it. Think of the clicks, man. Think of the clicks. Yeah, cool beans. Talking of cool beans, yeah, there's your coffee. Uh, but I think that's going to do us. I've got a fair bit done. We're going for about three hours. So that's going to do us, I think, for today anyway. As always, just remain... Words. Just remains for me to say thank you to everyone who's been watching, uh, either live or if you're not watching this live, then thank you anyway. Thanks to everybody who's been in the chat. You've all been good as ever. Uh, remember, if you want a sticker or uh, the, the big book, if you haven't already, send me an email with your name, address, and uh, I'll get them sent out to you. If you did win stickers last week, I say before, only one of you have mailed me. So there's two of you there that haven't had stickers. I haven't had a mail from you. So remember, it's modelmakingguru at gmail.com. Um, as always, thank you to everyone. Don't forget, uh, if you're watching this live or not live, or you've not been in the chat or whatever, you've missed it, don't forget, of course, do pop along to the Model Makers Boom Hut. It's the Facebook group uh, that I set up. It's, it's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Model Boom Hut. And it's the best, most friendliestest group on the Facebooks. It's an absolutely brilliant place. There's no bitching, no snarking of any kind. We don't allow it. It's an absolute fabulous place. Uh, and if you're just starting out and you want advice and you want to get lots of people to look at your stuff and you know give you advice and hints and tips, then go for it. It's a brilliant place. And don't forget, of course, do check out my Patreon page if you'd like to help support this channel and keep this channel going. I, I try not to shout about it too much because I'm, I'm British. I don't like asking for money, but I don't. I have to you know bring it out. So do consider popping along. Various rewards. Uh, you can support me from anything from a dollar a month upwards, whatever you think is reasonable. Feel free. It's like a tip jar, monthly tip jar helps keep this channel going helps me doing what i'm doing but that's going to do us so until next time thank you everyone who's watched thank you everybody in chat i hope you had a good time remember come back next sunday 3 p.m bst uh, and we'll still be doing this stuff gluing stuff together i'll get these sanded down and we'll go on to the next steps uh i think once this is built in sub assemblies we'll have to then move on to something else so it might be the it might be the hydra might be the big flying thing i don't know yet i don't know yet so we'll see. But anyway, until next time, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. Adios, amoebas.